donut this morning? It's a little more stale in the bag. I have to let you know. I think I'm fine. I don't think I've seen you eat anything other than pastries. I really like that. I'm kind of concerned for your well being.
Hello, and welcome to Crafternoon on the Natural 20 Proof channel, where we create, craft, and paint characters, creatures, and entire worlds for Dungeons and & Dragons and every other tabletop role-playing game out there. As always, I'm your host and Selma Hayek's third nipple, Garrett Robinson, and with me is another member of the Natural 20 Proof family, Nolan. Hello. I forgot to take the pop screen off the microphone. Well... Everything, everything was picture perfect. A little late, but picture perfect. And then yeah. that one thing just got right in the way when I looked at you. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, I think. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd say today's not too bad. How is it living in Mordor? Uh smoky. It is. Uh, for anybody out there, we're in the uh, we're in the Willamette Valley area of Oregon, which right now is not on fire but is receiving the smoke uh, and uh, fumes of multiple fires, many yeah. fires that are not too far away. A very big one near Mount Jefferson, I think, is the one that's dumping most of it in our spot. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not like we're in danger at all, but like you step outside and it's, it's Mordor. It's yeah. real bad. Yeah, so. it, well, well, actually, when the sun pokes through the, the fog, it, it does kind of glow red. It's goofy. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's the Eye of Sauron. Like, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty legit. But anyway, let's forget all about that. Um, let us paint some awesome minis today. We're going to talk about what the minis are. But first, dude, we played game one. It happened. Sure did. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was a riot. I, I had a ton of fun. I had so much fun. The energy at the table was incredible. I think that there was... <laughs> A lot of buildup, you know, that we were all so just like, it's happening, it's happening. I was, I was, uh, I was so stoked to finally be on stream. It was, uh, it was ecstatic. Uh, I was just, oh boy. So we'll talk about, we'll talk about our characters, our details, the show, everything like that. Angus just said, ah, <laughs> and so on and so forth um, about the stream. Yes, it was that very much. Um, let's show your guy and oh, yeah. what you're painting today. Sure. Do you want to bring that up to the camera? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a, uh, favorite, uh, character from the campaign that we played where we all kind of, uh, met each other. Let me turn down the exposure just a little bit, uh, to get him. That white primer is hard to pick up probably. Yeah. You get some of those shades in and everything like that. So this is Hey You. Uh, hey You is a dragonborn cleric. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a cleric. Yeah, you can see him casting Sacred Flame there. Mm -hmm. That is Sacred Flame. <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> it is Sacred Flame. Um, for sure. And <laughs> nothing else. Okay, we got there. Yep. Bada boom. Um so a bit, a bit, a bit of an explanation on that one. I, I show up to my first game, and they, the, the, I was the last uh, permanent player to arrive to the group until Angus jumped in. Just re no, we got Lucas in there. Actually, Angus was in a game before you were technically. Right. So he came in for a couple of games, mm -hmm. and then I showed up, and then much later Lucas. Yeah. And then after that, Angus again. Um, but my character shows up. She's a monk. And she's from a very spiritual and like religious town. She's very familiar with clerics, and everybody's like, "Yeah, he's a cleric. He's a, he's a priestly, you know, religious type and everything." And I'm like, "Cool. I know. I know all about those people." We get into our first game, our first fight, and the cleric is like, "I'm going to cast Sacred Flame." I'm like, "Okay, that monster." And I'm thinking in my head. I don't say this because I'm just a player. I'm thinking in my head that uh, monster now needs to make a Dex saving throw. He says, all right, I rolled a hit. I'm like, that's not how Sacred Flame works. <laughs> and I rolled to hit for the second flame. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he goes, okay, so that's one hit and one other hit. And he goes, all right. Uh, so, and he, then he picks up a D10 and rolls it and adds a number to it. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> this is, of course, after I've hit the creature with Bane, yes. which adds a d6 of necrotic damage. Correct. His Bane spell did an extra d6 of necrotic damage to the creature that had been Baned. And so it was about this point that I was like, okay. 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 I'm... All right. All right. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm, I'm down. I'm down now. But... um. <laughs> Hey You is just uh, just a fantastic character. Um, definitely a group favorite. 
I absolutely fucking love playing with him. And um, seems to be a running trend with the new campaign as well, where Nolan creates the character that everybody is like, oh my God, precious cinnamon roll. I love them. And they need to be uh, they need to be protected at all costs. I don't know about that. You've got quite a few fans for Hillary. Uh, you're you're making a pretty uh, strong claim for the spot there. I don't know that she's a cinnamon roll though. You know what okay. I mean? That's yeah, fair. that's yeah. fair. Um, I mean, I like her. But um, let's talk about that. Let me get the music back on. And oh, let me show off what I'm painting. I have a collection of giants, and I I recently determined um, that they are the monster minis that I use more than any other because even if I'm not using hill giants ogres and trolls I'm using creatures that can be easily represented by troll uh, hill giants ogres and trolls and so it's this small collection of minis and I'm going to try to do something a little bit different tonight where I'm going to try to um I'm going to try to speed paint as much as possible I want to get as far as I possibly can on as many of these very large minis as I possibly can to hopefully sort of highlight some, uh, some you know, uh, speed painting techniques when you're painting a bunch of minis that have the same or similar uh, techniques sort of applied to them. So that is what I'm going to be working on. So let's kick on some music and get into it. Conversely, I'm actually doing a few experimental techniques yeah. that will be interesting to talk about, too. Absolutely. Um, this mini is doing one that uh, we've done before to some success, which mm. is just using a shade or a wash on, on bare, clear resin. Okay. And it uh, seems to provide really cool coloration for spell effects. Cool. Um, and... Uh, We've used it on two or three different uh, models at this point, and I'm going to be using it here. We sometimes touch it up with a little dry brushing and stuff like that. I think, you know, we talked about dry brushing on the show, so I yeah. won't go into that too much. But uh, another thing I've been doing recently on some minis is Zelethar lighting, or Z Zenithal, Zenithal lighting. Right. Which, uh, uh, the, if you watch the mainstream, uh, my. Desmond Mini uh, was done with Zenithal lighting. I do like the results um, since his his duster coat is fairly flat. Uh, there's not a whole lot of ridges and stuff to hit for highlighting um, with dry brush and stuff like that. So right. I think the, the Zenithal highlighting is going to be my go-to method for uh, larger flat surfaces like that. Yeah, for sure. It seems super cool. That was the one that, uh, as, I, as I said briefly before the stream, that uh, Alex was talking about when he was here. And I definitely, definitely want to give that one a shot. Speaking of Alex, another Cinnamon Roll character. <laughs> oh, my God. In our, game, <clears throat> in our game Zero, when he busted out that voice, I was just like, oh, hell, he, he is friend-shaped. And he sounds like a friend. <laughs> this is, this is, oh, my gosh. Utterly fantastic. I mean, we all are pretty... Okay, I don't know that we're all, like, the best at creating the best and most universally loved characters, but you know what we're fucking great at? Creating characters that everyone in the group is going to love. Yeah, I think... You uh, know? I, I think we definitely play to our crowd, which mm -hmm. our crowd is us for now. Exactly. And, uh, you know... Um, and hopefully our crowd always remains us, you know? We'll to certainly a, to a be a part of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never cease to be a spectator at the table. And um, I'd like to think that everybody I play with uh, at least does from time to time. Exactly. Um, or at least most of the time, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's not too much to ask. You know? No. And if people at the table are actually invested in an interesting story, then you shouldn't be too distracted anyways, I think. I exactly. I mean, you know, um, if there's seven people at the table, then... At most, you should only be the center of attention, uh, the center of attention, one seventh of the time, and really not even then, because there's you know duo scenes and you know trios and everything, and then there's uh, scenes where literally everybody's involved and equally yeah. equally invested in the scene. So that was one thing that I actually I realized, sort of watching back. I um. I went through, I never randomly generate, um, like, the, on the personality tables that they give you. Mm -hmm. I never randomly generate them. But I will usually go through the personality tables that they suggest, and I will look at which ones that fit my already established um, 
idea for the character and then I will lean into them more and let them inform, you know, my idea of the character even more. Yeah, I've done some of that too. I, I like the, uh, in, in general, the fifth edition uh, personality system, the trait system that they've got in the uh, after the creation section. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's uh, It takes from some other gaming systems that I have liked in the past. Um, one of my favorites is Cyberpunk's, uh, what do they call it? Um... I forget what they call it. Cyberpunk has a backstory system that is incredibly robust. Okay. It is probably my favorite. Nice. Um, I think it, maybe it's called the lifestyle system or something. I forget what it is. But uh, uh, yeah, I, th I think D&D um, took from things like that sure. and, and tried to... Uh, to bring a little bit of that forward. And I think they, they had a success, but they've got room to improve for sure, too. Yeah, totally. And, you know, like, they are definitely the kings of, like, old hover, holdovers, like, alignment. And what does it really mean? Does it really mean anything anymore? Probably not, but we're D&D, &D, so we're still going to have alignment, you know? Yep. Um, but, uh, so, so with, with Hellry, I was looking through a lot of their suggestions, and with her being... Uh, the type of person that she is. Um, one flaw that I selected was I'm not, I, I'm like not happy. I forget exactly what the wording is, but it's like I'm not happy or I'm disgruntled whenever I'm not the center of attention, and that's very much Hellery. And I think that not so much in the game zero, but I think in game one, in like a crowd party environment like that, yeah. maybe, maybe don't do that all the time. I feel like it wasn't too bad as I'm watching it back, but it was not something that I want to do in every game that same way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but that was the only thing that I have attention on. And of course, you always have attention on, on yourself when you're watching it back. Right. And I'm just like, but everybody else was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun on the show. Yeah. It was really worth the wait, I think. Um, yeah. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Everybody was well. <laughs> everybody was really invested at the table. Um, I think w one thing that's nice we got that uh, we got the compressor box, so I think the side conversations weren't as problematic in terms of background noise either. Right. So that's that's a bonus. Totally. Um, which helps keep players invested. Right. Because uh, you know the times that you don't want to be a spectator, there might be. A, an important little thing you need to tell your partner or your neighbor or whatever. And, and there's just one way to do it. Exactly. I really, I really enjoy um, seeing seeing how that piece of equipment specifically played out when I did want to do that. Because you know, this is my first time sitting next to uh, Lucas, mm -hmm. and turns out I actually really like talking to Lucas like a lot. So I just kept leaning over and being like da 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 da. And I'm watching it back, and there's there I, I, I can't hear myself yeah. at all, you know. Um, well, the people who want to be heard can be heard exactly with with that box exactly. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, and sometimes they can be heard too much, but they can't ever be heard too much to the point where it breaks the microphone yeah. or the the computer. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you know you. I don't know if, how much you knew before the game happened, but now you for sure know uh, Alex's class. Uh, yeah. What do you think about the juxtaposition between his character and my character? Uh, it's interesting for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know enough about his backstory to say uh, that um, that it's like a weird parallel or something uh -huh. right away. Uh -huh. I mean, th there are some coincidences for sure right, right now, but I'm hoping that as it grows in, we'll start going, wait, there's that too. <laughs> wait, there's that too. I hope that happens. That's, that's some of my favorite stuff when we get that stuff in the game. hundred percent. The moment he described, and you know what, to be honest, he didn't go into his, in, into as much detail about it in game one as he did in our game zero. Yeah. But the, in our game zero, the moment he described his rage, quote unquote, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Because he went first in the combat. And so he was like, all right, here's here's what my rage looks like. And then 
I'm like, okay, cool. And then my turn rolls around and I'm like, Bleh! <laughs> It's, uh, it was fantastic. That was the moment that I knew that there was, there was something special going on. I still haven't watched your guys' Session Zero. I'm not sure if I'm going to yet. Well, I talk, I was talking to Jesse about that uh, briefly, and I'm, I'm of the mind that at this point, because um, I have watched them all, because Jesse asked me to for, you know, um, analysis and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, uh, And, um... I don't think that there's any reason that the whole team can't watch them all. Mm. There, there's nothing that I saw that was like some crazy secret that we're all going to have to work hard not to role play with or meta game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, I guess probably we should double check that with Jesse. Mm -hmm. But, uh. Yeah, there's maybe a couple things we're not thinking of, but. Yeah, it could be. But again, you know, like, I guess if, if we're not. Yeah, I think he was saying the same thing too. So we'll double check that with him. But I think it's I think it's definitely worth watching. Yeah. So way why, why why Desmond's voice? Was there thinking behind it, or were you just like this will be hilarious and I want to fuck with people, <laughs> or both? Can um, be both. So yeah, uh, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit with a voice. Um, I I used to when I worked in uh, hospitality, I used to put on silly voices all the time. And talk to customers. And That's so fucking amazing. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh my god. Uh, so I kind of like, uh, I, I kind of thought back to things like that and, and said, you know what? I'm going to try and like do it well. Okay. Or at least well enough. Uh-huh. Um, I feel okay about like fooling American audiences. I yeah. don't think I'm fooling any people from the oceanic region. Currently. Oh no. Uh, but uh, I aim to get there, and uh, if anybody from there is watching, I'd appreciate help. I know that um, I've, I've read that Australians are quite particular about their accent, and that when they hear somebody do it poorly, they, they take it personally. Um, and that's, that's fine, but uh, I, I'd, I'd like to think that uh, I've at least got a good baseline and I can improve from there so support would be nice if that's possible if there's somebody <laughs> out there who saw it and wasn't filled with such blinding rage that they uh, you know desire Nolan's immediate demise um, you know uh, call in we don't have a phone line set up but um, so I, on a related note mm -hmm. my uh, one of my uh, very good friends and an author who I have published is Australian yeah. And um, so I, I, I just can't tell her to watch the show. Yeah. I don't think that there's like I can't detect anything wrong with your accent. Mm -hmm. I know that they're you know s same way you just said. I'm sure that there probably is, but like not as far as I'm concerned. I'm like wow, that's really really good. But she is very particular, and she gets as you as you indicated very upset so like i can't I, I just can't suggest to her that she watch the show yeah because i'm sure she'll be like uh garrett you have to tell him to stop or your character has to kill his character <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah I, I i recognize that at a certain from a certain standpoint i'm kind of walking into fire <laughs> uh but at the same time i i do trust that i can develop it in a way that won't just piss people off sure um and uh and another well, thing that's kind of nice is in the D, &D idiom mm -hmm. the fact that um that it's a little bit more of a general oceanic accent is not problematic yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask you about that um so like so was was that like what are you going for exactly so my original my original thought was a new zealand accent and that's and, what i picked up and and so he's probably like 80 percent new zealand okay in his accent and the parts that aren't are definitely a little more on the uh you know australian backwoodsy kind of thing so mm -hmm. you know when he when he gets when he gets riled up he might he might turn into a bit of a um i don't know uh, a bushman maybe uh, what, what i'm not sure i, I they, uh, an Australian might call him a bogan. Okay. Right. This is outside of outside of my realm of knowledge, but sure, sure, sure. 
um, which uh, I do know. So here's here's one thing going for me that already puts me ahead of uh, some people, I guess, in terms of doing an a, a Australian or Oceanic accent. Sure. So Australian in particular, I recognize that there are at least three distinct accents in Australia. Good. And... Um, and, and that I can pick up on the on the differences between them. Oh, that's nice. So, th- there's that. Um, so I'm I'm talking about posh, common, and and kind of the backwoodsy bogan okay. accent. Okay. Um, so I think that uh, the fact that I can say that much might put some Australians to ease in terms of like my commitment. Make them feel to a little learning. better. Yeah. Um, so I hope so. I hope that goes a little ways. But if not, well, sorry. We apologize. Yeah. Um, it's it's an, it's a Kiwi accent anyway. So right. <laughs> what are you complaining about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always this, you know. So um, a lot of people make the joke, and I've heard uh, Matt Mercer talk about it specifically, where you know people are like, "Do you ever get nervous like going for going for accents and whatnot?" And he's like. I, the real answer is that yes, I do, and I do my best, and I'm always super nervous anytime I feel like I messed up. But my snarky kind of shithead answer is, why are you complaining? France doesn't exist in this universe. It's not a French accent, yeah. so I can't have fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I, I talk about Zimnian accent, and well, mm-hmm. the, fe- the name of the world is, is they say Wildmount, but if you, you, you'd call it Wildemount, uh-huh. I think. Uh huh. If the if, way it's spelled, uh, the way it's spelled, and with the accent, right. I think you'd call it Wildemount. Wildemount. Um, speaking of which, I was gonna, I was gonna say when you were talking about developing the accent over time. I mean, Liam in episode in campaign two, episode one versus Liam now is light years of difference. Like yeah. it's so, so, so much better as he has continued to work on it, mm. continued to hear from people. Uh, you know, and just d- develop it. So I have I have faith in you. Yeah, and then that's that's a thing too. Is like you don't necessarily even notice unless you hear them side by side. Exactly, right? exactly. And I know Liam's totally capable as a voice actor, and and I I didn't think that there was a whole lot of issues with his with his early accent. And, right. And, you know, the fact that he's made adjustments and change shows that he's recognizing things that. Uh, uh, that are bothering him, and he's he's working on it. I hope to have the same kind of approach. Um, yep. Even though I'm not a professional voice actor, I, right? I, I do like to think I can hold myself to a standard at least. So. Exactly. Meanwhile, I think I nailed nailed Hillary right off the bat. <laughs> I yeah. love her so much. Yeah, Hillary's voice is pretty spot on. <laughs> um, so I was actually playing around with the idea of like writing a song mm-hmm. for each character. Oh, once we got, oh, please once do we that. Got introduced for everything, and uh, and actually getting it recorded, maybe even like putting in a, an album with, you know, one or two songs per character. Oh God, um, please do that. And uh, it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be a lot of work. Uh, but I was thinking about uh, Hillary's song is one of the first ones that came to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want me to talk about it. But I do want you. I want you to talk about nothing else. I want that to be the rest of the show. <laughs> well, um, I do have an ego. If you haven't picked that up, I do have an ego. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you said that because yeah. there was something in Discord. Oh yeah, I have to go back to um, <laughs> that. I was going to chuckle about and say something, and I was like, you know, I don't know if Garrett would feel that way. Okay, uh, but but now that you've actually. Uh, now that you've actually said something about your own ego. Oh no, I, I'm I'm aware it's there. I know that there's certain places where I need to tone it down a lot. I think there are other places where I'm very happy with it and it's an asset. But it, I, I do not mind jokes about it because I am very aware of it. I'm trying to th- figure out. I'm not sure where it was. Uh, but at any rate, so in Discord, I mean, you have your avatar picture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there was some conversation where I felt like chiming in at one point. Just, just it was you and I think Angus, mm-hmm. and and then I, I was thinking about chiming in immediately afterwards. 
But the whole thing was, like, uh, I think something about Avatar Pictures came up, maybe, or, okay. or there was something about, like, what you love or whatever, and I was and I was going to make the thing, I was going to make a statement about uh, how uh, if our Avatar is what we love, apparently I like cheese, um, and, well, Garrett likes himself. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Accurate. I, I Accurate. Can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly the situation or, or what I was going to say. I didn't type it. I was like, eh, I'll just, I'll leave it. It's really, it's, it's, uh, definitely, um, I am a strange thing among authors, um, because there are so many things that, like, authors kind of universally complain about, um, they hate doing events. They hate doing appearances. They hate talking publicly. They hate, um, they always hate their own author headshots. You know, they get taken to be stuck in the back of the book and everything like that. Um, authors are generally really introverted people. Uh, they just don't like to have a lot of attention drawn to themselves, especially physically. You know, they're, they're, their preferred form of, of praise or compliment is reviews in very high-ranking newspapers that nobody necessarily knows that they read, that they just sort of like secretly read in their homes and whatnot. And in all of these things, I am the exact opposite. I love talking to crowds. I love doing live appearances. I like started doing my own comic conventions with a booth where I just like sold my books, you know, like hand to face to face to people because I was. I was making money hanging out with the biggest nerds in the world all day, like, holy shit. And I, you know, people would come up to the booth and they were like, what is this? And I would just sit there and pitch my books. And authors are like, oh my god, like, I could never do that. If somebody was like, hey, what is your book, you know, and, and, and like, why should I buy it? They would be like, I don't know why anybody would buy it, it's awful and I'm awful and I don't, and I just, I can't relate, I cannot relate. Yeah. Which has its good sides and its downsides. Yep. But um, that is definitely a, a personality trait that Hellry inherited. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's a good bit of, of the players in all of our characters. For sure. I think... Uh, Desmond got your accent. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got my accent, got my... Uh, <laughs> Incredible good looks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I look like a Hemsworth, right? Yeah, totally, man. Certainly tall enough. <laughs> um, actually, all, all of my brothers are over six foot. Oh, really? Yeah, so I was the only guy in the family to be below six foot. That's and, funny. Uh, well, I mean, it, it was kind of funny for a while. Did it get old? Oh yeah, it's old. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like I, I, I don't I don't get bugged by it. But right. I'm like okay, fine. Yes. So thank you. I am the short one. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> I have never heard that joke before. Yep. Yeah, that's. Uh, he's he's definitely got. Uh, he's he's gonna be one of the ones where the backstory has a lot more similarities um, than, than, than other characters uh, that I've had. Oh, so oh, similar to your backstory. Yeah, yeah, similar oh, okay. to like, me as a player. Like, Got it, okay. Um, he'll, he'll have, he'll have some, some similarities that way. Cool. Uh, which, which is where more of the similarities come across. So I guess to answer your question from earlier in terms of like where did he come from? What was the idea? Yeah. And uh, really... I wanted to do more of the backstory concept of my own, you know, of, of, of my own story. Yeah. Um, originally, and I was trying to find a way to kind of go that direction without it being like way too upfront and parallel or whatever. Sure. So um, I think I came up with a concept that. It covers all of the important stuff I was thinking of without, um, you know, while, while still maintaining a unique flavor all to his own character. Right. And so we've seen the information, we've seen the information on stream, so this is not really a spoiler. You went with Artificer right at level one. Yes. And then you took Fighter level two. Uh-huh. So what's going on there? So, um, 
He's an artificer uh, by trade, uh, which, uh, yeah, that's what he would have been doing with himself prior to joining the campaign. Um, and, uh, and so that's why the level one is there. What he's been doing since uh, would have nothing to do with that. Right. So, Which uh, is probably why he ended up fighter for second level. Exactly, yeah. So a big thing was, and we didn't show it on stream, but uh, we talked about it uh, off stream. Um, it kind of had a side conversation. Uh, nobody and Desmond did. So the idea was that uh, if you watched our session zero, you would know that I had a lot of trouble firing my crossbow. I did. And <laughs> I did notice that. <laughs> and so uh, what we did, uh, I had originally planned on kind of leaning towards taking some levels in fighter anyways. Okay. Uh, but I didn't know I was going to do it that early. But because of the narrative, I was like, hey, look, you know how to use this thing, so show me. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of why I took the level there. I took the archery bonus. And, Interesting. And now I know how to use my uh, crossbow a little better. Interesting. Nice. Okay, so you are now an archer fighter. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. Um, let's take a quick pause. I want you to show me how to make this flesh wash you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Because I want to throw it on them right now. Okay. Yeah, another another technique that we were... Oh, I, uh, I was making contrast, not wash. We can, oh! We can make a wash with... Uh, I forget. One of them makes a wash, and the other one... Uh, makes a contrast paint. Makes the contrast. Paint. Okay. So, um, I, I, I don't know. We'll have to look at which one of these. Oh, we'll dang. I the, totally should have done the contrast paint, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, they're gray primed? Uh, they were, yeah, that sort of yeah. weird. They're, they're you know, Nolzer's Marvelous oh, Minis or whatever. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they came pre-primed. Um, maybe I'll just use Nuln then. Um, For the red? Karaburg Crimson? Well, I do want it to end up being sort of... Uh, it's a very red flesh-toned base, but if you've got... Or Reekland Flesh Shade. There we go. That's the shit. That's the shit right there. Okay. That's what we're going to go with. <laughs> Bridget's... Bridget... I think Bridget thinks that I'm slurring? I'm not sure. Bridget loves the eyes like dreams. I oh, noticed yeah. that she cracked up at the table when you said that. <laughs> and I did too, because I'd heard it. And also, like... Full disclosure, I was very, I, Garrett, the player, was very invested in getting your mask off. Yeah. Because I needed Hellry to react to that. I wanted Hellry to see you and just be like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <Yep. laughs> well, it never, it never was supposed to be that funny, my face reveal. Mm -hmm. So he kind of forced it to be funny because we were talking about the acid damage. And I was uh -huh. like, well, yeah, I've definitely been splashed in the face before. For sure. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's not why I'm covering my face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> are we doing a break or are you doing the... Oh, no, no, no. I did so Not a break break. I just wanted to break on the convo to find out how you did the wash. But since gotcha. we already have a pre-mixed one. Well, actually, to kind of touch on a thing, because uh, I did mention I was going to talk about some techniques. Oh, yeah. Uh, I stumbled upon a uh, recipe or formula or whatever you want to call it for creating contrast paints. Okay. Uh, and that is uh, you get a acrylic medium, um, which I found this one, Mon Marte. It's, uh, it's kind of white, creamy in color. Uh, but, yeah, just an acrylic medium. Uh, acrylic flow medium and then a airbrush flow improver so you do one part one part and then two parts whatever color you're uh, you're wanting to make your contrast out of uh, some interesting paints, uh, yeah, some paints will have uh, better results than others it's just the way the pigments are um, so uh, you know have some uh, have some discretion when you're looking at it I guess to, to kind of go well is this is this actually what I want to use or or not so um heads up if you if you end up needing more i did actually end up getting some acrylic flow because i was going to make my own gray paint and then it kind of became a pain in the ass and i just started buying more paint mm -hmm. so i've just got the flow sitting there um so if you ever need more i have a whole big bottle of it okay All although right. i have a feeling it kind of lasts a while that's uh, the same the stuff here the white stuff um i'm not sure if it's the, it's a different brand but i i think it's the same material Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's probably a uh, hundred different brands. Uh, yeah. It's mostly the same stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. 
All right, what do I want to be? That's a good grade for that. I think so. He wears studded leather. Okay. So let's do. I guess we'll we'll just start with that umber like I was talking about. This is coming out okay, and then we'll start dry brushing with progressively lighter flesh tones. God, Nulm kind of spoiled me. In it's it's just really good for contrasts. Yeah, it just works really well. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of works universally. Like it worked on the red dragon scales. You know, I overused it slightly because it was my first time using it uh, since I was a teenager. But like, it worked real great and that dragon looks awesome and it worked on the fucking treants and you know everything yeah um this is good but it, I, I'm, I'm looking at it and going like but it could be darker <laughs> well that's why I was saying the care of her crimson I feel like that would be too red though don't you think um I don't know let me try it on the hand of one of the other one on, on the other or like the feet of the other one I think on that base color, it might look okay. Okay. But, uh, who knows? Give it a shot. Oh, God, it's so red. Okay, we're trying it. We're trying it. We're going for it. It's darker, but it is, it's very red. Oh yeah, is it too red? It's, it's, yeah, it's very red. Uh, what's it on? Wait, on the foot. Oh, on the foot. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. I don't know. Let's see how it looks when it dries. Yeah, I still have, yeah. I still have the rest of this mini to, uh, uh, dry it to do, so. Mm. We'll have it on the back burner. I'm thinking I'm just gonna... Oh, Bridget was saying it's his class, Archer, Fighter. Archificer. Archificer? Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. Um, so, what did you think of the, <laughs> the, the collection of Jesse's player characters? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, is that actually what, what no was I'm sure or? it was not I'm sure I'm I'm sure one or two of them slipped in there but I'm sure yeah. it wasn't well I think that one for sure right he was saying that he was gonna put one in I think one of his player characters yeah, I thought, oh what, did I he say I that heard him say that oh I didn't I missed that um but I might have been confusing that with like he's got some Bartleby or something What's that? <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah, that was the that's the that's the character that keeps showing up in um, uh, combat encounters in the Thursday campaign. Right. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so what what do you think of that whole troop showing up? Um, you know, I liked it. I had uh, I thought about um, campaign starting uh, that that kind of same way. That kind of like uh, oh, welcome to my party. And you're not the only special people? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the idea, but I never did um, put together a, a campaign with it. So I'm actually excited to be a player in it. Yeah. As opposed to a DM. But... That is always cool. Um, what do you think of the bagpipes moment? <laughs> Ridiculous. Greatest. Greatest thing ever. I was so proud when I watched that back. I was like, that went off really well. Yeah. There are a few moments of comedy gold that were really good. Oh my god, every moment with Roberto just had me fucking rolling. Yeah. So good. <laughs> there is no way there is that much... You cannot have that much food. It must be an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, he, he told me at the start of session zero, he's like, all right, so my character's got some inspiration from Hey You. I hope you don't mind. I was like, nah. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, if, if you do want to know a little bit about this guy, uh, there is some character traits that are shared with uh, Roberto's character, Nobody. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's fun. It yep. is fun. Uh, it's a it's a different kind of flipping the game on its head. You're not like derailing. You're just like I don't know. You just you just have different. 
I don't know, different different ideas about how it's supposed to work. You're a different kind of person, but n like you said, not in a derailing um, way that disrupts the table for everybody else. Because I feel like with both Nobody and Hey You, one very important trait for a character like that is they're extremely likable. And I feel like everybody at the table kind of wants to be friends with that character. Yeah. And so that makes them, when the character does something that's like slightly not what, you know, like slightly off the beaten path, mm -hmm. then the table is like, oh, but that's fine because I love him. I love <laughs> Hey You. It's okay for him to be a little bit weird, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and same thing with nobody, you know, like, um, he revealed kind of like a bit of his backstory in, in the, in the game zero. And then you can just like read a lot about him, but when he starts off, he looks like he crawled out of a dumpster. Yeah. Um, and, and like, I'm just like, Oh, like precious baby. I mean, gigantic baby who could rip your head off, but like precious baby, I want to help him. Yeah. <laughs> You're so, you're so cute in your weird, quaint ways. In your strange, strange, what even are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, put down that, put down that, that, that spear. That's kind of intimidating. <laughs> Precious baby. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And, and Hey You is the same way where it's like, I don't feel like Hey You actually even gets into a lot of derailment scenarios you know what i mean no uh so i mean where that stemmed from was uh we had talked uh as players uh some weeks back about uh what tropes you have as a player in your characters mm -hmm. like uh you know your characters tend to do these things or right so um i roberto and i talked about that on last week's show actually but yeah, yeah go ahead so i i was um it had been this. Th these are the first campaigns I'd I'd been in in years. Right. Um, but I'd played thousands of times, hundreds of times at least, uh, in uh, other versions of the game and stuff, and and just you know haven't played in a long time. So uh, I was thinking about my old characters. I tend to do. I tend to play humans, elves, half elves primarily. Mm -hmm. um, I do halfling thieves and stuff on occasion, but. Uh, Hey, you! I really wanted to play something I wasn't familiar with. I was I was learning a new rule set, more or less. Uh, it was my first kind of full-on fifth edition uh, attempt, mm -hmm. um, and and so I thought, you know what? Let's change things up. Let's do things a little weird. I'll try a non-humanoid kind of race, mm -hmm. and I'll just, you know. There has to be some some things that are normal for everybody else's conversation that are just weird for somebody like a dragonborn or a right. lizard folk, and like, you know, that's that's where a lot of some of the best lines from Hey You come from was, uh, you know, when he talked to uh, was it Peldon that he said that to, where he said you're quite fetching for someone with skin. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, <laughs> and it's just like, I thank you. <laughs> there are so many ways you could have phrased that that would have been less bad. <laughs> but I mean, that's... It makes total sense from Hey You's perspective. Yeah. Right? Like, absolutely. Oh, man. that's I forgot that line. That was <laughs> fucking hilarious. So, yeah. You know, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those, like, really rich character moments that, that a lot of the players have come to love from Hey You... And, and, well, any of my characters, really. Yeah, because I was going to say, yeah, you have, that's, I was going to ask you, actually, what's your, what's your ver view of your tropes that you bring to most of your characters? Um, I play almost exclusively males. Mm -hmm. um, th they're frequently human, elf, or half-elf. Mm -hmm. uh, Desmond being no exception. Mm -hmm. He's a half-elf. Yeah. Um, and, uh... And other th other than that, uh, the, the same kind of thing I said in uh, in Discord on that conversation is they're all quirky. Yeah. Uh, you know. They're I, all quirky for I, sure. I include some of my own personality in them, and uh, it's usually the quirkiness that's easy to just say, yeah, yeah, this is fun. It's yeah. fun at the table. It's fun uh, t for me to play, mm -hmm. and I hope it's fun for viewers too. Um, it's just difficult to to go that way without derailing things and. I've had a good bit of practice, uh, but I know that I still can improve for sure. I think 
I, I think that quirkiness is definitely the trait that I would have most associated with your characters, only having experienced three of them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, hey, you in the campaign where we met, um, uh, Ren in the Thursday campaign, um, and then, of course, um, you know, now Desmond. Um, and I was, I have to say that I was surprised by how, and of course, I guess I don't know every detail about Desmond, but I was surprised by how out of uh, uh, out of the box he seemed. Not not outside the box, but like came out of the box. He wasn't, uh, you know, a quote unquote cleric, and he wasn't um, unearthed arcana race or something like that. You know what I mean? He seemed a little more straightforward. A little more like he's an artificer and I guess I kind of kept waiting for the other shoe to drop and I was like oh no he's he is an artifice oh okay all right fine <laughs> and I mean like granted artificer is still like the one class have they actually put it in a rule book yet yeah it's in uh the Eberron it's in the Eberron yeah. book okay well there you go but um but you know that is that is the most unique thing about him but he's still you know a a class that you can just find in a book <laughs> which is great yeah I, um, I really like the the artificer concept uh, mm -hmm. I, th I think my favorite class to play is a hybrid mm -hmm. uh, where it's you know kind of that mid-range um, caster medium armor Fewer spell slots, maybe that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, where if you have to, you can get in and take a hit, but um, but you're really better off like helping out from uh, from a couple feet back. So um, artificer fit into that really well. Hey, you did as well with uh, with warlock. Um, he's got plenty of range. He's definitely more long range than mid range, but uh, the idea is still the same. Where if he needs to, he can walk up and soak a few hits for somebody. And, and that's part of his uh, character, too, is he will and has right. uh, sacrificed his own body for the sake of somebody else. Totally. So. I, um, when, when Roberto and I were talking about this last week, I said that one of my... Oh, we have a couple of things here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Harry says, I already have a backup character. My characters are very prone to earlier untimely deaths. I would say that's... Harry's trope. Yeah. That's his character trope. Um, derailing. Thinks back to the swarm of cats and dogs that nearly followed us across hundreds of miles. <laughs> uh, to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. I didn't roll that. That's true. I didn't ask for that. Unless you're considering just me having that chart given to the DM uh -huh. at, at, at the very first game as asking for it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, th I think that... There was potential. I didn't read through that list, by the way. <laughs> that list has like a thousand things on it, and I was just like, uh, I, I took a brief glance to make sure that like there wasn't anything that was just gonna, that it was, there, there weren't like 50 things on there that were just gonna instantly break everything. Right. Um, and so I was like, yeah, okay, that's good enough. And obviously, Jesse's discretion for anything he decides is like too crazy or whatever. Yeah, you don't know, Nolan, you don't get a wish spell, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah. So um, my my trope, and I you know I think I'm like you and uh, and Jesse in one way, and maybe Harry, in that um, I have in the past been a forever DM, um, and have not gotten to play that much, and maybe that is a contributing factor to one of my biggest character character tropes, which is that I like to play multi-purpose heroes not actually i don't usually multi-class peldon is very unusual in that respect but um P peldon's uh monk path uh which is the path of tranquility is actually really the only path that super appealed to me as a monk i wasn't yeah. I wasn't super attracted to Monk until I was like, wait, 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 wait. You mean I can have evasion, that armor class, that mobility, and pretty good damage output. Not the best, but pretty good damage output. And I can heal people? Oh, dude, I'm in. And I love that. I don't always like one of my roles to be a healer, but I like... Which is one reason that I've always liked rogues, is because you have a lot of utility, mm -hmm. but, you know, if you play it right, you're a damage machine. 
Yeah. And I like I like both of those things. I don't like specking too hard into. I don't like life cleric because you're you, you you can play it interesting ways. I'm not trying to say that anybody else can't play a life cleric in an interesting way, but like you're a healer and that's what you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so Hellery was just like awesome. I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm going to be an orc. I'm going to have 20 strength. I'm going to crush. I'm going to just destroy in combat. And I'm the fucking party cleric. Like, how great is this? This is amazing in every way. Yeah, I think there's uh, there, there's something to be said about having the ability to, to wear two hats or something in the party. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that in, the, in a larger group, it's harder to get away with. Yeah. Because uh, almost certainly, if you're kind of splitting focus that way, somebody in the group does it better than you. Sure. But um, but that being said, sometimes you need two people, and having hybrids that way can really be flexible. Right. Yeah, how many times... Well, I mean, have you watched Critical Role Campaign 1? Uh, I've seen some, but I have not seen uh, very much. Well, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of times where Keyleth basically had to go on, like, full healer duty. And it was her and Pike, or her, or, you know, Pike wasn't there because Ashley Johnson couldn't be there. And so, Keyleth is the healer, you know? Um, and, uh, and it's really nice to, and then there were other times where she was the main damage output of the party. Or, like, she single-handedly, you know, demolished the green dragon so the rest of the party could then finish taking it down. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's just, that, you know, I'm not ever interested in being the best at one thing I like being able to dip my toe into different waters yeah and also all my characters are fucking tall they're just very they're very big oh what's that all about I don't know I just like it I just like being big I'm pretty big I'm 6'4 and so like I don't know I just I have you know I have my YouTube channel yeah and the number one consistent thing that happens when people meet me in real life after watching me on YouTube they always go holy shit you're taller than I thought you were I love that I love that feeling. It feels real good. Yeah. And so um, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that I narrowly avoided not being the tallest person in the party. I wasn't going for that because I like found out how tall fucking Roberto and um, uh, 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 Alex were gonna be. Yeah. I didn't plan around that. I was just like, fuck it. I'm just gonna go all out. She's gonna be eight feet tall. And then they, you know, came in with their like seven feet tall and I was like woo dodged a bullet <laughs> yep good thing I picked eight right <laughs> yeah I uh I don't know I never really got that um like I like picking a height and a weight or whatever but like I don't know that's that's always an afterthought for me I never I never go out with a character design being like yeah they're tall they're big just big yeah and, you know, a lot of people like to have their characters be small. Um, and uh, and that's cool, too. Yeah, actually, I uh, like I said, I used to play Halflings for Thieves and stuff back when, uh, you know, they had different racial traits in the book. Mm -hmm. And Lucky wasn't weird. <laughs> what do you think of Lucky, by the way, as a total side, side question? Uh, the halfling, halfling luck, not the feet. Oh, I'm okay with the halfling luck. Actually. Okay. What do you think of the feet? Uh, I don't like the feet. Okay. <laughs> seems too powerful? Uh, it seems like it's too versatile. Oh, okay. If you've got a feat that literally every class is going to take, maybe you don't have it. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. How would... What, what, what might you do to adjust it? Um... Or would you just be like, nah, fuck it? I, I think if I were designing the game, I just would not have that in the game. What if it only had its attack roll abilities? No skill checks, no saving throws. Attack rolls, and you can make an enemy re-roll their attack roll. I like that, uh, because it is more uh, focused. And, uh, and you could call the feat something like... Uh, lucky combatant or something right mm -hmm. and so yeah it's it's the same kind of like utility but only in combat rather than literally anywhere right so i do like that better just in the most general sense of things yeah i i'll say this 
I enjoy it as a DM because I I like throwing shit at my players, but I love when my players are sneaky shits and and sort of not even not even just outsmart me, but when they're holding an ace in the hole. Like I actually I actually don't like it when players try to outsmart the DM. You know, and it's just like why are you asking me these questions? Tell me what you're trying to do, and then I will help you work out a solution towards that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, but I love when Harry, when Harry, you know Harry is like trying to punch the hag in the face, and he's like, I roll a two, you know, natural two, and it's a it's a nine or whatever, and then he's like, and I'm like, oh, sorry, buddy, you missed. So that's your turn. He looks at me and he goes luck. And I'm like, oh, you motherfucker! You're still holding one of those! Okay, fine! Yeah, 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 roll your luck. I like that. I like that aspect of it. Yes. Yeah, and it kinda... I'm not gonna lie, I love I love playing with the luck feed. Yeah. yeah I, I think in terms of pacing, it's also good. Yeah. Uh, it is a feat that keeps the game going. Because uh, you don't have to wait another turn to actually land that shot or whatever, right? Yep. But I do think doing it just in combat still fixes that, still addresses some of those issues. Because that's where the that's where the dragging really tends to happen is in combat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I feel like we, as a party, have good training in that respect, mm -hmm. which is good because it drags more and more the more players you have at the table. Yeah. But we all have a lot of experience now between Thursday and Sunday of playing in a large group. Yeah, we, we struggle from time to time for sure. Some rounds really drag, but yeah. uh, I think we tend to do better than you know, most groups. Unexperienced, maybe. Right. Inexperienced. And we're all pretty good at planning our turns, I think. You know, that's, that's kind of my, you know, religion. For all the attacks um, held in rolls, she's pretty fast on her turns. Mm -hmm. I know where I want to go, I know what I want to punch, and I just do it. Um, yeah, I strive for that too. You know, but I am I am going to be interested to see what's going to happen now that I'm playing a cleric because I've never played a crazy spellcaster um, in 5e with a large party. You know, so it's like because I know one thing that can happen to uh, crazy spellcaster in combat is you've got your plan, you've got your plan, you've got your plan, and the person whose turn is right before you goes, and now the spell you were going to cast is useless, yep. and you're like, oh. Hmm. So do something else. Uh, yeah. And that is one thing that I love about Hellry is if that ever happens, I can be like, all right, cool. What's the closest person? I'm going to hit him with my axe. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that's the thing I like about the hybrid characters, too, is like the artificer and stuff. It's like, well, I guess I'll shoot my bow. Right. Because I don't have anything else that is going to be super effective right now. And I'm not just going to sit here staring at the board for five minutes, you know? I'll just, you know, hold my uh, action. <laughs> they are still not hostile. <laughs> ah, so on last Thursday's game <laughs> that I ran right at this very table in this very garage, Nolan was first and he, he was a, he's a wizard and uh, a couple of treants moved aggressively towards the group. Um, and, uh, and Nolan went first. And he said, well, I guess I'm going to hold, I think it was Firebolt. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to hold Firebolt until they look like they're acting hostile. Now, unfortunately, the Triots were last, last in initiative order. So the whole party fucking unloads. They just unloaded everything on these two Triants and they were dropping fireballs, not bolts, fireballs they were hacking into them with axes and all this sort of stuff um and when the treants turn rolled around one of them was like at eight hit points and one of them was at you know like less than half its full hit points and i was like no fuck that like they turn and run they just run um and then after that it was nolan's turn and he was just like yeah they still haven't actually acted aggressive so i'm just i'm just gonna sit here <laughs> And that was when the rest of the party was like, wait, are we the assholes in this situation? <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you are, kind of. I mean, you could have let him hit at least one of you. Yeah. <laughs> 
everybody could have held actions and then just blown up one tree as soon as they swung. Isn't that right? Oh, man. I think held actions are kind of, uh, they're easy to forget about. Yeah. Um, that, that you can, like, really control the pace of a combat right. by, by f- intentionally throwing certain things in places. Right. Um, um, I have a I have a thing that I like to play with. Tell me what you tell me what you think about this. But as a DM, I will I will allow players to hold an action and their move, not their whole turn, but an action and their move, because I think that that's really empowering to a type of character that isn't normally super empowered, and that's tanks. I had a game on Saturday uh, with my friends who we get to play about once a month. And they had rescued this dragon wormling um, from a red dragon that was they thought was planning to eat it, and um, and then as soon as they killed the red dragon, uh, mind flayers who also lived in the cavern had you know attacked them and surrounded them, and the cleric was like, I want to protect this dragon with my life, but I want to, I want to be able to fight to defend it, but I also want to stay close to it. So what I want to do is I want to hit them with I want to hit them with a guiding bolt now. Or how did it work? No, she wanted to hold a heal in case the dragon got hurt. And she wanted to hold a move so that she just stuck close by its side wherever it went. Because it was already on low health, you know? And I was like, I mean, that just makes sense to me, you know? not It's not holding your whole turn, but it's having, I want to stick by this thing in order to protect it. Because then otherwise you're like... Then you have to, if you don't do that, then you kind of have to metagame and be like, okay, where are you going to move? And I'm going to move to that spot ahead of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely agree with, uh, uh, with what you're saying about it. Uh, Maybe if I do nothing, like any kind of disease. Or order of operations is, is tricky because, yeah, you, you either metagame and just talk about it at the table. Right. Or... Or you literally have to plan your turn like a like a programming function or something, which like, is not fun to me. If this, then this. Right. Um, you know, with with a bunch of different clauses. Right. I do like the versatility of being able to hold an action with maybe two triggers. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I like that. Just increasing that to two triggers as opposed to one might be enough to to say. Uh, to give to give you more options to do what you want to do on your turn. Right. But I don't know. that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, it's something to try, anyways. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Angus said, "I don't know if I have a super noticeable common trend with my characters. Although, other than my latest half elf sorceress, I think I tend to play non-standard race class pairings that end up therefore being slightly suboptimal, but fun because of that. To me, that's Hellry. I like that a lot. Although it, it's hard to even say that she's suboptimal." Because if you're a war cleric, you know, you yeah. want to be one of the more warlike races. Um, yeah, one thing I like to do is, is have a concept that, uh, that doesn't really match the, the A tier builds or whatever. Right. And then you min max that one. Right. <laughs> because you'll never be as effective as, like, the regular one, but, you know, you can still have fun and feel like you're, you know, not, not just breaking the game. Kind yeah, of. exactly. I like that a lot. Uh, Laird said, we were totally the assholes in the Thursday game. Spork was going to talk, but Toph hit it before I could. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Now, to be clear, and I don't mind telling you this, they definitely were going to attack. I figured. Uh, And then uh, Angus said, but you can hold a movement by holding a dash action. Right. But if you want to hold a movement and an action, you can't do that. And I think that there's a lot of situations where you should be able to do that I, I like the idea of, of having a uh, uh, ha- having at least a binary function yeah of if this happens I'm doing that but if this other thing happens we're going that way yeah that's a good and, idea and that's uh, I, I think that you could easily implement something like that uh, even if you're doing it just you know uh, situation by situation that'd be right. easy to figure out and then also just having a general concept that's like that I also think that a lot of it just boils down to like, you know, being uh, to, to good communication between players and DM. Cause like 
I don't even know. In, in that situation, I didn't feel the need to like dream up like specific rules. I, I just told her, you know, she was like, here's what I want to do. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine with that. You know, like that's that's OK, because the thing about laying down like specific rules and especially if they get used by a broader audience than just like your group you always play with yeah. is somebody's going to try and find a way to game them. Right. To gain like extra advantages that were not intended. That will happen. That's for sure. So what did you think of the combat? Um, it was curious. Uh -huh. uh, I was kind of kind of curious about it i'm not sure if jesse ended up like changing health totals or something mm -hmm. halfway through the fight on the creatures uh-huh i mean like you said i'm a forever dm and i'm looking at the creatures and i'm like that seems like a pretty tough combat even though we've got a lot of people in our group uh-huh uh for the, for you know some sure very specific that. reasons right like, not being able to hit a creature effectively because you don't have a magic weapon uh turns a challenge rating one creature into a very tough fight. Right. Um, and I think that uh, that there was a little bit of that kind of amplifying the uh, the difficulty initially. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you know when it came around to it, um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think there was any risk of anybody dying in that for real. I don't know. Hard do you mean do you mean that you think that we had it like fight wise, or do you think it was more like your game zero situation? Uh, maybe a little more like the game zero situation. Okay. Where it was a doctored fight, and uh, maybe I don't know. It seemed like everybody came back, right? All nineteen mm -hmm. of the people that were on the boat. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of them died in their fights, or at least got knocked down. Yeah. You know, but, but I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if some of them actually died, died in their fights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like at one point, Kaz had failed two death saves. And there were plenty of opportunities to get him back up before then. Mm -hmm. But if he'd rolled a one on either one of those, he'd be dead. Yep. You know? So it's just like... Eh. I was pretty worried about Hellry. She went down yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> yep. When that first elemental hit me, and he was like, okay, and you take 10 damage, and I was like, whoa, that's a hit. Holy cow, that's a hit. And it gets multi-attack, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. If it hits me again, I'm I'm probably fucked. And, uh, and I was correct. Yep. Going down. Yelling timber. Uh, yeah, so it, it was a tough fight. When I look at it, I think, well, yeah, I don't think there's a scenario where we outright lose. Right. But it was a tough fight. Mm -hmm. So my thoughts are... Jesse had mentioned he was going to make it tough on us. Yep. Uh, I guess... Uh, I he guess was correct. He was correct. Yeah. He wasn't lying. His hips don't lie, that's for sure. I don't know anything about his hips. But They're surprisingly me. slim. Okay. Uh, I'm just yeah, kind yeah. of... Just like uh, just, uh, just straight lines all the way down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> how are you? How? How do you feel about Desmond's performance in the fight? Um. I felt a little useless. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, uh, certainly when it came down to the to the final segment where it was the water elemental. And my bonfire didn't work. Oh, right. That was tough. Yeah. That was rough. So I was kind of thinking, like, I don't I don't have a whole lot of options here. But I did make a mistake. I didn't change my... Uh, I didn't change my spell list up. Um, wait, hold on. I gotta think about it. Do I prepare spells? Or do I not? I don't think you do. As an artificer? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I have not. New characters. Yeah, yeah, new characters. So, um... I'm pretty sure you don't, though. Yeah, I'm thinking I don't, but... Uh, I don't know. For whatever reason, I, would, I had in my head of, like, oh, I've got the wrong spells for this situation. I could have changed something. Hmm. And, 
Maybe you do. I could be remembering one. Yeah, and, and so I was sitting there for the whole combat going, well, you know, my bow doesn't really work here, and I guess my bonfire does, so I stuck to that. Yeah. And then that wasn't going to work on the last guy. But when it came down to one target versus all of us, I, you know, I knew that the action economy would be in our favor, if nothing else. So yeah, for sure. I kind of held back and shot him with the bow and figured, yeah, yeah we're good enough here. Yeah. Oh. Well, and uh, healed up uh, Kez. Right, Kez. Yeah, I am glad that you have heals. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take healing word. Okay. But uh, I do have cure wounds. You want to know a fun thing about Hillary? What's that? She didn't take cure wounds. Okay. <laughs> she was like, I'm not going to spend an action healing somebody. <laughs> I could hit things with that. Are you kidding me? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like everything. It, yeah, that is that is 100% her. Um, so, I mean, you know, I could take cure wounds anytime I wanted to, but... I figure I'm going to rely on Healing Word until it gets to a point where I can take something like, you know, like Mass Cure Wounds. Okay, I'll take Mass Cure Wounds because that is that is incredible. But like, you think about it, Cure Wounds versus versus Healing Word, it's plus two hit point average, plus two hit points per level. So it's like, it's probably better for the group if she's using her axe and healing whoever went down, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Healing Word as a level one spell is, like, a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, if you're not taking it as a healer or as somebody who can't heal... You're doing it wrong. You're, you're doing it wrong. Right. So, uh, Desmond's doing it wrong, but it was a conscious <laughs> choice. Yeah, totally. Uh, Desmond is not a traditional uh, magic user. He's not trained or anything like that. Yeah. His, uh, his magic fundamentals come from whatever he needs for alchemy and whatever cheat tricks he could figure out before. So, right. Um, and I love that. So he, I, I picked his spell list uh, for session zero based on like, what does he use here where right. he was? And I still have that list when I went into that combat. And I, you know, honestly, I love that. I, I think that, um, I think that there are default builds for classes and you were talking about this before i think it's good to break away from those um you know according to conventional wisdom every monk ever should take a uh, sentinel yeah i understand why people say that peldon's never gonna take sentinel if she goes to level 20 she still won't take sentinel like that's so not peldon you know what i mean yeah it's just not in at all in her nature she's not she's never going to be like stay here so i can so me and my friends can kill you She's going to be like, oh, he's running away now, guys. We don't have to keep fighting. You can prepare spells. Okay, there you go. It's not your cantrips. Um... So, yeah, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah, I have the wrong spell list for sure right now. <laughs> that was my fault. Um, but, yeah, when, when Bonfire didn't work on the last one, I was like, all right. I guess I'll just do something else. Shoot it with a crossbow. Oh, hey, it's not magical. <laughs> <laughs> but you have that bone color, right? I have uh, this khaki. That's what I use for bone. Yeah. put this on his uh, toes. I actually only ever bone in khaki. <gasps> I don't know what that means, actually. <laughs> I gasped. But... Uh, now, that, now I think about it, I'm like, that's just nonsense. That's like, just... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that can't be a thing. Um, what did I want to ask? I just thought of a thing and then it fled. You know how hard it is to concentrate on trying to say things when you're painting? Like, oh my god. I don't know anything about that. Right? Not at all. But, um, yeah. So I like Desmond a lot. What, I guess we can start talking about our Game Zeros a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's seen them. So, what was your Game Zero experience like? Describe your general impression of it now 
two weeks and a bit later. <laughs> um, well, again, I thought the combat was like really impressive for us. Really? <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Um, I know your combat was a little easier. <laughs> Bridget told you? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, well, I don't know also, if you remember, but in the game one... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roberto was like, you fought a manticore and you survived? And I was like, we did surprisingly well, actually. I think we did much better than anybody thought we were going to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that is definitely the case. I, I was not expecting to beat a manticore that easily. Well, that was a, that was, that kind of ties in a little bit with that combat I was talking about, or, or last combat too, uh, where, you know, the water elements came up and just action economy. doesn't matter what the challenge rating is at yeah. a certain point, right? Exactly. Action economy just means that one side wins. Right. And uh, when you've got one creature versus several, yeah. uh, it's, it's easy to get the action economy out of balance that way. Right. Um, yeah, so that could be one of the main reasons behind your Manticore fight. But, yeah. uh, I think it was. And I think... Um, you know, I actually um, misremembered something about manticores, and I don't know if this was just my brain inventing things or if it was from earlier editions, but I thought the manticore was going to have some, like, crazy poison something. And I don't know what I was thinking of. They do have a venom, I thought, but... I, I looked them up afterwards, and they do not. They have no venom in them whatsoever. Huh, maybe it is an older version or just confusing it with a different creature or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was... Uh, it was... Uh, it was an interesting fight. Let's do... What you're looking for? Uh, I'm trying to think if I've got some sort of container to make a contrast. I think I want to do a contrast on his wings. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because they're... Uh... Well, I think they'll be okay. Let me see if I could open up one of my little Tupperwares. Or uh, empty out one of my little Tupperwares. One of these bottles would be... things here is hey he was actually like one of the most colorful characters I play. I suppose that's another trope maybe of my characters is that they're actually pretty uh, reserved in terms of their physical appearance. I can't believe I just did that. What'd you do? I emptied it out into something else and then I immediately threw it away. <laughs> okay. Wow. There we go. Everything's fine. <laughs> now the biggest problem I'm going to have is deciding what color I actually want this uh, contrast to you. you so, um... Had you and Roberto talked about your characters whatsoever before Game Zero? Uh, we just made sure we weren't the same class at level one. That's about it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because uh, originally he had talked about playing a fighter artificer, mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> like Valeri. Uh, and so I was like, wait, wait, are you going to? Because, like, no, I yeah. changed my mind. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> Because I had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so it originally started as just the Plague Doctor mask. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I mean, where the hell is he? What is he doing? And then I decided that it would have the tassels on, on the beak part. Sure. Uh, and uh, well, I think that was a great choice. Did you have any idea of that synergy? Um, 
Synergy? Have you seen his mini? No. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, but uh, not, like, thoroughly? I, I saw it on the table. Okay. At the game, but... Um, I guess I'm just going to tell you. There are a bunch of tentacles coming up out of the ground. <laughs> oh. How <laughs> about that? And I was just like, wait. And, and Jesse, when he saw... Jesse told me that when he saw the mini and heard your backstories, he was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, this is amazing. What color should his wings be? Well, I kind of imagine them as a pink in my head. I don't know. I mean, I guess they'd be copper, right? Sure. I thought that they, they were sort of fairy-like and not of this realm, which made me think that they were not of his body. Oh, uh, no. Okay. No, they're dragon-esque. Okay. Uh, they were supposed to be. Anyways, I don't know if the... I don't recall Jesse's description offhand, but... And, I, you know, a lot of things can be lost in translation on the description, too, so... I could be totes wrong. I don't know if I need to shake this stuff, but I did... It's usually smart. Okay. We're doing it. We're doing, we're making a contrast. I think. I'm trying to. We're going for it. And we're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> it. Live. Capital Thailand. We're doing it live. Capital of Thailand? Without force okay. or pain. I don't believe that container is waterproof. <laughs> it's good times. Do you need paper towels? Do you want to, do you want to clean is that, up? Is that the capital of Thailand or is it? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, that was great. I'm gonna find uh, I'm gonna find Angus's null oil real quick. Oh uh, dang, we should have let them clear. I missed something. Oh, Terry said not Spork is also not the Sentinel type. Alert, maybe but not Sentinel. Uh, just had to let a bunch of red shirts tank for you. <laughs> I think in mythology, Manticore has a scorpion tail rather than just spikes, so poison would make sense. Yeah, there we go. seen a contrast with metallic so I don't know if it'll look like absolute garbage and if it does I will fix it because that's just how I do I can fix it oh yeah oh that's that good shit that known well I'm having some trouble because Layer lines from my print are coming out. Oh, want want. Yeah. However, I think the contrast is doing what it's supposed to do. So it's a good paint, possibly not the right mini for it. Yeah. Mm. So we're going to do something with that, other than get it all over my person. <laughs> I felt it splashing my arm and I was like, oh no. Yeah. I, I, I felt drips come out and I was like, mm, it's all over my shirt, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I only gave it a couple shakes even. <laughs> mm. I kind of love this. Nothing about his color scheme is matching. That's very hey you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the darkness takes you. He's got gray, red, brown, but he's copper, so it all looks like brown. 
Yeah. And then he's got a ridiculously blue hat. It is a very blue hat. Actually, let's get an update on him real quick. We haven't okay. seen we haven't seen the boy in a bit. All right. Got the wizard hat. How did he acquire the wizard hat? I was not. I do not believe I was there for uh, that. So Gwen bought him two hats. Okay. Uh, and the latest one was this wizard hat. It was, you know, oversized. It was at uh, one of the shops in Bretagne, maybe. Okay. I forget makes which, sense. which shop, but uh, yeah. Oh, Bridget got... said she is coming over. Do you need a new shirt? No. I mean, looks good with the stains. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah, I think the contrast for the wings, it actually looks pretty good on camera there. It does. I honestly, I can barely see the lines. I think that, oh, I see what you're talking about. I thought that was part of the effect. I uh, thought that was intentional. That's the layer lines. Dude, that actually looks pretty fucking cool. I don't even know if they're going to show up on camera. Anyway. There's a lot of red. Mm-hmm. And the white primer showing through. A eh. little disappointed with this paint job. Womp womp. But that's okay. That's okay. If I need to redo him, I can redo him. And you know, not every mini is going to be perfect, and that is okay. That's probably the biggest thing I don't like about white primer is uh, just every now and then you get a color that just does not work. Right. It won't stick no matter what you what you do. Yep, yep. And like every other color is fine. And that one gives you so much. So yes. What do you do to connect with her? So you think you think the contrast is good? On it, I think the lines look cool. I think they look like a strange, otherworldly effect, which was something I hadn't pictured it like that, but that was something I had pictured about the wings, you know? Well, they are actually part of his body, so I think I'm just going to do copper. Okay. With the bone nubbins. Bone nubbins. Uh... So, what do you take for level three? Uh, I am taking Artificer again. Nice. So is he going to be mostly Artificer with a few levels of Fighter? Yes. Do you have a build plan for him? I do, essentially. Wow. Um, it is actually one of the more rigid ones I've got for a character. Okay. Uh, in terms of just, I've actually planned it out. Right. <laughs> Usually I kind of go from the seat, but I, but I, I do like reactionary play. Like I said, I knew I was going to take a level in fighter. I just didn't necessarily know when. Right. So the fact that it happened after a session in one, you know, it worked really well for the narrative there. So I'll just I'll do that and I'll I'll try and stick to those kinds of uh, that kind of a commitment when I make choices about the character. Yeah. Too rationalize as much as I can within the narrative itself. 100%. Uh, and I talked about that last time with this guy even where uh, I knew the wings were on their way before the level happened. Right. And uh, talking with Jesse, we, we had them pop out uh, as you know, just flavor uh, even though they're totally ineffective currently. Currently. Right. Because they will be effective down the road. Yeah. But it would just... It, seems a little silly that they would just like be there then you know overnight like you wake up the next morning you've got giant wings right exactly so i thought well okay we'll just have them grow over the period of a few days or weeks however long it, however however long it takes to get enough levels right uh, but yeah i really like that idea of reactive leveling it's not something that i had seen or thought of before until Peldon. yeah um, she was not not at all supposed to become uh, take one level in Warlock. Mm -hmm. And then the longer we played, the more I was like, okay, this relationship with Arathun is leaning in that direction. She already knows 
about warlock. She's lived in a city that has a codified uh, system for becoming a warlock, and she li she lived there for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, and she would be interested in something that would help her uh, defeat her enemies. And so I talked to Jesse, and I was like, you know, there there is no that I'm aware of dragon patron, but it seems way more like a hex blade anyway. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, frankly, pretty powerful for her. So I was like, hey. He was like, hell yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the Hexblade uh, rule set is actually written really open-ended. I think for that purpose. Right. The idea that, like, it doesn't have to be a sword. or it, do it doesn't even really define what your connection is so much other than it's an object. Right. Um, so, you know, it's got sentience. It's got power. You know, that fits the crown pretty well. Yeah, for uh, for sure. And, you know, it um, it was definitely a good source of uh, role-playing angst, yeah. you know, specifically with Gwen. Yep. Um, and it was a very... It totally made sense as a thing Peldon would do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you've got some words for her. Oh really? Oh yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh god, I want to hear them. Uh, well, we're... I know I have to wait for the table. Oh god, I really want to hear them. Get a chance. I know. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Finally, getting close to the base coat spray done. She said she didn't know who she was. Let's get some lighter brown. Honey, brown. That. Without necessarily revealing, trying not to necessarily reveal anything that's going to happen uh, future-wise, spoilers or whatnot, what was Desmond's initial impression of the rest of the group? Um, he doesn't know any of them, and he's happy about that. Okay. <laughs> then how do you think he reacted to you seven should stick together? Um, well, where he's at is, uh, okay, well, you watched the session zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much I should say. So you know where I was before joining up with the group, mm -hmm. uh, or joining up with, um, with nobody anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so... Which I have questions about that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Um, so he, he'd been in there for some time uh -huh. and he may have been able to get himself out of there but he also didn't necessarily try his hardest Right. so uh, he, he made efforts he wanted to figure out a way to do it but he he also he wanted to know that he could he didn't want to do it. Yeah, he wasn't necessarily ready to go yet. Yeah. So when when nobody came down in there, uh, and you know, he just uh, kind of maybe had a change of heart right then and there. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, maybe it's time. <laughs> so that's that's. Kinda... Was there an element of, oh gosh, I didn't realize how lonely I was until I wasn't anymore? Maybe something like that. Yeah. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a powerful... That can be a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, his his uh, thoughts on the rest of the group are fairly... Um, I don't know. They're, they're fairly easygoing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah, all right. I'll take along. I don't care. Sure, let's see where this goes. Yeah. Uh, he, he has his... He has his priorities, and he'll stick to them. Um, and a lot of that comes from his experiences. Of course, you can ask anything for it. Down at Pink. Right. And, and kind of the self-discovery that happened there. Like, what are, what, what's important to me? I can give it a try, yeah. Uh, what do I want to accomplish in my own life at this point? He still might not have answers for all those questions, but he at least knows that um, that 
there wasn't a whole lot left for him in the cave that could be found. Gotcha. Has he said, or have you said, how long he was down there? Well, there was a mention of something, but whether or not it was true, uh, I'll leave that up to Hellry. Gotcha. Okay. So what you're saying is make an inside check. Sure. <laughs> um, do, you, do you know what I'm referring to? I don't remember, no. Well, it had to do with when I was ordering a drink. Right. What, what was said? Uh, well... Uh, I think the first one I said was something along the lines of I thought my dog got taken by an owl bear, but he was actually at the farmhouse down the road getting some strange. I think that's right. <laughs> and then the, the second one was I spent five months in a cave and no matter how hard I tried to die, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't die and I'm right. not sure if I'm cursed or a god. I remember that part of it. I didn't remember the five months. <laughs> and then the third one I said was, I guess I'm not cursed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a god. <laughs> That's very interesting in the context of a toast that was made in my game zero. Yeah. I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let anybody who's super interested piece that one together. Oh boy. I just want it to be Sunday again. Yeah. You know, like I feel like it's not a good move to co-opt. Is it Sunday yet? But that's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'm being I'm gonna be honest here. This honey brown. Mm -hmm. really tying the whole piece together. Honey Brown really ties the whole piece together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I'm glad. I mean, look at what the shoulder piece did. Just wow. Actually. like, And those lines aren't clean, even. Yeah. But just the little bit of color variance there really actually makes this thing pop some. So. It matters. It matters. It's It does a lot. Yeah, some of the khaki. Yeah, you want a little bit of that khaki there. It's not sitting on the on the bits. You know? The uh, khaki bits? Yeah, when your khaki <laughs> falls off your bits. <laughs> okay. Honest review. Be brutal. How was the limerick? Oh, great. <laughs> I was a big fan, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I loved it. I mean, I'm no Sam Regal. But Hillary does have proficiency in performance, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to put a little effort into this. <laughs> every time combat would end, I would. Every time my turn would end in combat, I would be like, okay, what am I doing on my next turn? And then I would figure that out, and then I would go back to the limerick. Yeah. And then I would check about halfway through, and I'd be like, I forget who was who was before me, but like two people before me, I had remembered who it was, and then I would be like, okay. Do I, am I still going to do that thing? Yeah? Okay, back to the limerick. The singular beacon of white light above. Yeah, honestly. Did you, so you wrote that whole thing there at the table just then. Right? Yep. It's yep, yep. I thought so, but at the same time, it sounded pretty good. Yeah, I liked it. It's familiar. I mean, you give me a dragonborn named Pecker. Like, come on. It's Pecorino, man. I mean, is it? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Real cheesy name. Hillary has... Uh, Hillary has uh, put him down in the uh, in the history books as Pecker. Yes. She will never call him anything else. That's yeah. So, what do you think of the odds that we're going to end up going against uh, some of these other adventurers that were summoned? Likely, at least one group. Right. Pretty near certainty, I think. Just seems like a direction you'd go. Right. Gun, right? Yeah, totally. He didn't put us in that room for nothing, right? Exactly. I'm interested in this Om character. I think that it is he is a fantastic character to stick in the beginning in a and you know who knows, right? And I'm not even I'd like I I wouldn't want Jesse to answer this, but like in a comic book perspective, we're like an early friend and mentor to the character ends up being like a supervillain. Like, he just radiates 
last minute turn into big bad evil guy. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And I love it. I love it a lot. As you begin to back away, you feel the tendrils. All right. So yeah, I, I don't know that I got a super heavy villain vibe from him, but uh, it's it is there. Uh, like I said, I'd kind of thought about using that scenario in games of my own. Yeah. So when I when I look at it, or when I experienced it, I'm kind of looking at it like, oh well, what did I do here? Right. And you know, how would I have worded certain things I wanted to uh, impress upon the players? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 So I didn't necessarily get the the big bad, but. I also recognize that there was enough groundwork that if he turned into that... It'd make a lot of sense. It would make sense. How's he doing? Actually, really good. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you at a good uh, break point? Uh, I think so, yeah. Sweet. Let's take a quick break, because we've been going for almost two hours now. Yeah. Uh, we will hopefully um, greet your wife, who has come to visit, and then uh, we will uh, be back in just a few. You know what I haven't even mentioned yet this episode? Because you don't notice it when it's not here. It's not oppressively hot tonight. Oh, yeah. And I think that that should be celebrated because it's been real bad sometimes. Real, real bad sometimes. Mm. But anyway, we are going to take... Yeah, good. We are going to take a short break. We will be right back with you in uh, about 15 minutes. Catch you then.
somebody of something again? I'm sorry to all of you. You've caught on and you've known me the longest. I haven't been entirely forthright with you. I... suit me, serve me. I think it did for a while. You know, maybe you're just at a place now where you don't need those things. Perhaps. But you have saved my skin, and I will be here if I can to save yours.
your powers came from that sword? I'm gonna let you speak to her. To, to who? To the Wild Mother. You have three questions. Uh, the answers will be simple, just yes or no, simple positives and negatives. And it can be, I know we have a lot here, and if you have any questions about what we're getting into, that's fine, but I wanted to give you the opportunity of maybe clarifying something that's inside of you. Would you 
urgency in my life and show me how best to move towards achieving that sort of change? I mean, if you're before it, I, I could answer that one. What do you think this is? All of us, me here, you here, and these people, this is intervention. Eventually, one day, somebody will pray for a miracle. Pray for something to save them, to whatever gods are nearby. And that prayer will be answered because he will show up. That's, that's how it works. That's what, that's what a champion is. your eyes and you think thoughts, wishes, questions. It's cold. You shiver a bit. And you focus. And you begin to get this strange sensation like your your body is floating. You feel these feelings envelop you like a warm bath. Your body floating atop a heated ocean of gentle waves. Peace finds your mind with the familiar smells of salt and brine, the sound of seagulls in the air around you. Broken surf crashing on a shore somewhere. You open your eyes. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Oh, to the second portion of the show. Here we go. Back in, uh, I am uh, starting my layering and dry brushing on the ogres. What are you going to get up to? Uh, I'm going to touch up a few places that are um, a little iffy. Okay. Uh, clean up some of the lines, and then I'm on to wash and highlights. You were talking about all of the awesome things that the uh, Honey Brown was doing, so let's see some of that popping in. Yeah, so I had the dark, the burnt umber underneath, and there wasn't a whole lot going on with the character. It was really looking rather plain, but now that I've got that Honey Brown on there on some of the accented pieces of the armor, oh, yeah. it's really starting to pop. I'm not quite done with that yet, but uh, that really is creating some depth to the, to the color scheme that is desperately needed among the reds and what does his wand do again um that's actually a mace okay so he carries a mace that he doesn't actually use very often but um <laughs> so a funny story about the mace then they were in derm and um they got hired by uh Rafael the elder yeah is that right to uh, to to do a task so they went into Rafael's shop to guard it from theft uh-huh uh, so we hang out we hung out overnight uh, waiting for for thieves to show up, and then we we fought them off of the premises or whatever. Sure. So during the course of that event, uh, inside of his shop there was this magic mace, a bronze mace that had like dragon wings on part of its uh, headpiece as 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 as, uh, as part of the um, the spiky bits that that you would hit with. Sure. And uh, and I was like, oh, that's nice. And I picked it up and I put my own shoddy mace in its place and kind of walked away. Combat happened and I left the building with the mace. <laughs> I then later... And he still has it? He still has it. Nice. I then later walked back into the shop to give it back. And they're like, oh, you're a thief. And I was like, oh, I'll pay for it. Fine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just got Skyrimmed. <laughs> 
So yeah, he was gonna give the he was gonna give the thing back and got called a thief. It's like fine, whatever. Fine. If I am a thief, then I am thieving it. Well, he did pay for it, or he, he at least did his normal. Is this enough? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, definitely a favorite uh, favorite aspect of my children as Hey You. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Th th those are some other things that um, that I, I want to include in my characters that I don't think get included very often in a lot of players' characters. There's little things that, like, don't really have a place in a D and D game, right? Like nearsightedness, yeah, or something. Yeah. You'd think you'd fix that with magic, but you might not have. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe I'm playing a character who's nearsighted or farsighted or something. Which one is he? I don't know. Uh, this one. Oh, he's a... Uh, no. <laughs> he is a... Uh, not which character, but which... which nearsighted or farsighted. Impairment. He is... Farsighted. Farsighted means you can't see up close, right? Yeah, yeah, he has trouble reading, I've noticed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And initially I thought that was an intelligence thing, but it's not. No. Yeah. He actually used to read a lot. That's so. Uh, the, the, when, one time when he was doing that, Bridget was just like, "Oh, he breaks my heart," and I was like, "Oh no, he can't see the pin." Oh, he breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I had uh, uh, a who read for him in the in the library. It was uh, uh, Alex's character, Giv. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I remember. That's really super great. I do love little flavor stuff like that. It just. It's, it's layers, you know? Uh -huh. Mine was kind of... St I mean, I, I, think, I actually think Peldon has a couple, but um, the main one I thought of was kind of stupid, and it actually only just came up in the very last Iron Belly that we played. Oh, yeah? She never sneezes. Never? She doesn't sneeze. She's never sneezed. Like, does she build up and then just never... No. Nope. There's a sneeze, or is it... Just not a thing. That happens for her. She theoretically could, but she has never sneezed before. All right. I, why? I don't know. I was just like, uh, what's a random thing? She's never sneezed. <laughs> She's seen it. She knows what it is. She can envision it. It has never happened to her. And it was just weird enough that I was like, yeah, that's her thing. That's her weird thing. I do think that, uh, that a character needs that. I think that's one thing that... Um, well, I mean, you say that, that the people at the table like my characters... I think I have, I've got a little bit of experience uh, in in the character development aspect where, where yeah, like you said, you, you almost need a thing that is, it's, it's an anchor point for your character. Right. That's relatable and easy. Yeah. And you could call it gimmicky or something. Like, hey, use, is this enough? Right. But uh, it's stuff like that that really anchors a character in, in a in a situation and uh, and, and, and I think that uh, you know I've, I've seen more stuff like that happen in the other player characters now around the table right I'm happy to see it yeah for sure it definitely is a nice I don't know it's a it's a <sighs> it's fun I love it I love seeing it at the table I think it's interesting I think it's funny it makes for great comedy moments especially you know, because comedy can be, comedy can be busting expectations, and on the flip side, it can be delivering on expectations. Mm -hmm. And you know, to a degree, sometimes I'm sure we forget. I've forgotten, but to a degree, when a shopkeeper says that'll be ten gold, everybody at the table kind of goes. <laughs> but pay, pay him, Nolan. Pay him. <laughs> Is this enough? Is this enough? Uh, so the thing is, he, he doesn't really care about money. That's a thing I, I also have it with my characters. They, they, they have a... It's not necessarily that they don't care about money, but they might have an interesting relationship with money. Yeah. And, and that dictates some of their interactions within a town, for instance. I'd say uh, between Helry and Peldon, um, they have slightly different views on money but they both love spending it and that is definitely something that they get from me much to my wife's uh dismay sometimes yeah i love spending money love 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 spending money but i'm not i'm not super occupied about earning it so it's not like i've got tons of it to spend but when like some comes in 
I just really like to spend it, and Megan has to put it, hide it away very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She. Sounded like she. Yeah, we have. Uh, help. If I would help in her name. We have some financial choices as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she manages certain aspects between yeah. me and Bridget, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, I mean, Desmond definitely has a thing with, with money. Yeah. Um, and you're the benefactor of that, uh, uh, of that relationship, I suppose. That was pretty thus great. Far. That was pretty great. I was joking. I did not think that was going to play out the way it did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Do you want to? Do you want some insight there, or, or sure, absolutely, out? lay it on me. No, no, lay it on me. Okay, so well, it has to do with his backstory. I'm totally fine with that. All right, so he used to be a snake oil salesman. Oh, okay. And something went wrong. Uh, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but he doesn't. He, he, he doesn't want to, you know, the, the drive for money that that whole part of his life was mm -hmm. is something he wants to get past. Get away from, yeah. Makes total sense. Makes that decision make a lot of sense, too. Mm -hmm. Are you wrapped up? No, I haven't oh, okay. washed yet. I was just uh, taking a sip mm -hmm. and, uh, and thinking Well, I think he's I think he's fantastic. I think he's entertaining as hell. And uh, I cannot wait to have more conversations with him. I wonder I, I'm very I'm so curious where we're gonna go next. I'm yeah. just like, cool, what's what what what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I don't know either. Um, I, so Jesse asked us for the boat, right? Uh, right. we printed that and um, and I was like, what the hell I guess we are going to a lake, so a boat makes sense. Are we doing a are we doing a naval campaign of yeah, some sort? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed to it, but like they're hard to make work right. Yeah. Also, I've seen the map. I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, I mean, well, there's the ocean to the west, but Yeah, and, we... and some of the lakes uh, some of the lakes are of considerable size. Sure. But yeah, like where do you where do you actually like is there something that's equivalent to an open sea? Right. I don't know. Oof. I need a bigger dry brush. Well, um, I've got a few. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how big? I've got. There's how big do you like got? That. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You mind? Go for it. Oh yes. That's actually a really inexpensive brush, so you know whatever happens with that, I don't care. Wonderful. Yeah, one thing, one, you know, thing about Helry, mm -hmm. she doesn't super have big plans. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't have some, um, and this is a thing that we actually talked about. We all had a role, all the Game Zeros had a role-playing session in between. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I found out, you know, a lot about uh, Bridget and Alex's characters, but I told them name. kind of everything about Helry because she's an open book. And so, yeah. like... I don't even mind saying most of it because um, she'd, she'd tell anybody. It, yeah, like if it doesn't come up in game two, it's only because I'm trying not to monopolize table time. Yeah. <laughs> but like it would come up in, in game two mm -hmm. where she just, she was a gladiator for a long time. 
until a god showed up and was like, you have more important things to do. You're working for me now. And she was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, but she didn't, she, she was warned about an attempt on her life that the people who ran the um, gladiator ring and the people who ran the, the city were going to come after her. But she wasn't given anything to do beyond that. She was just like, I need you to survive. So uh, when this happens, you need to uh, you need to not die. You need to turn and run, which is very against your nature. But I need you to do it, because otherwise you will die. And I'm a god. And she was just like, uh, I mean, I do not want to die. So this sounds like I'm all for all of this. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that it would be nice to do that because I know from both sides of the table how it can kind of suck to as a DM to be handed a backstory that you have to work really hard to integrate with the rest of the party mm -hmm. you know and um, and I have sometimes done that in the past as a player Peldon was super easy yeah. obviously but um, but I wanted to make it just as easy on Jesse as possible um, but then that also makes me go like, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I have no clue. You know, sometimes, sometimes a character is best without a whole lot of stuff beforehand. Right. I mean, I used to have, um, I used to have players that would come to me with, you know, 10 pages of like information. Right. And while I'm excited about reading 10 pages of stuff that you worked on, it's a level one character, my dude. Right. <laughs> what the hell could have possibly happened that kept you at level one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes just simple, like, yeah, I, you know, ran away from home. Right. That's it. And here I am. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd say in the Thursday campaign, there's a lot of that. It's just everybody's kind of lost and lonely characters, except for one person who I don't want to spoil. Um, because it's sort of there's there's a lot more complicated stuff mm -hmm. to to go over, but like you know your character is just like doesn't really know why he's here. <laughs> wait, wait, in wait, in a literal in, in the Thursday campaign, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, in a literal and existential sense, he doesn't know why he's here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great because I can just be like, all right, drop little drop little nuggets for you. Yeah, yeah. Which some stuff has been kind of confusing, uh -huh. and other stuff I'm like, well, I mean, I gave him leeway, so. And there's certain stuff where I'm just like, I think everything that I, I think it, I think where I'm going with this makes sense. And then there's some stuff that throws you guys for such a loop that I'm like, wait a minute, I need to go look back at the backstories because I don't know <laughs> how. <laughs> right. <laughs> they shouldn't seem this confused. Although, yeah, I. It's interesting. Shit, I wonder if anybody in the group is still is still watching. Because I, I actually kind of want to ask you a question, but I don't want anybody to see it. Oh. Um, I mean, it's okay if Bridget sees it. Yeah. If anybody, she's probably the one who's not watching at this point. Yeah, probably. Contrast Giants. Nothing wrong with that. You know, it works so well on the treants that it's just like, it's a little addictive. Yeah. But you know, on like flesh, it doesn't always come out the greatest. Uh, I think I'm a little too much. Hey. No oil. No oil. More like, more like Nolan oil. Yeah, probably. Give me some of that. Put 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 me on a brush. <laughs> I feel like this is a euphemism. I feel like it can't help but be a euphemism. Paint me like one of your French guys. <laughs> no, that's a slightly. 
completely different context of that <laughs> quote. You know, um, <laughs> I uh, I have a prepared speech for Hillary. Oh yeah. That I have been waiting to break out. I thought I might break it out in Game Zero. Thought I might break it out in Game One. Hasn't happened yet. I'm rather upset. Not really upset, but also upset. But not really. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. Oh. I'm excited. I told Jesse about it. He knows it's coming, and he was just like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" Like, is it, uh, does it need a certain scenario? It does. It needs okay. a pretty specific scenario. All right. So that's actually something about uh, character design that, uh, that I take uh, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And that is that I intentionally build a character that has pivotal moments in the future. Uh -huh. I don't know exactly how they'll turn out in game. Right. But I know that with the backstory I put together, it should happen. Right. And, uh, and, and that is a very important thing if you, A, want your DM to be invested in your character and have you be a, a, an important part of the campaign. Right. And, and, and two, it can just generally be a lot of fun because it gives you something to look forward to and, and uh, as well as uh, uh, some ideas about who and what your character is. Right. Or, what they might do. I'm okay with you, I, I, and you don't have to if you're not interested, but what would you say is a future character moment in as much or as little detail as you want to for Ren? Uh, for Ren? Mm -hmm. um, actually, one of those enough, pivotal moments. Uh, many of those, many moments for Ren actually happened. Okay. So, um, there's fewer of those for Ren. Uh, there's still plenty. Okay. Um, so the nice thing, when you when you figure out how to build a character that has these, uh, um, I don't know what's the, I don't know, crossroads moments maybe, yeah. is, is a good way to put it. A crossroads moment. Um, they, uh, if you'll figure out the, the more you kind of implement these concepts of crossroads ideas for your character, uh, the, the more that they can further develop into into more complex things as well so um, I don't know what, I, I don't know what I'm saying with that well so Ren yeah so Ren is uh, the 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 things I had planned happened pretty much already mm -hmm. um, the things I have not planned um, or the the things that might happen in the future um, are you know gonna be more of a surprise for me I Okay. And that's okay, because I, I did I built the encounter concepts as though they could grow into bigger and, and more complex problems or solutions. Yeah. Uh, it's really weird to talk about it so vague, but... Uh, it can be tough. It can be very tough to try and talk about these things without being, like, spilling too much info that you don't want people to have. So, uh, yeah, I mean... The, Roberto the says he feels really bad for popping your pile of bones feature so early. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like, I don't, I don't know or care too much when they happen or why they happen. I just, I design a character intentionally with, a, with stuff. I'm like, okay, these will be really important things uh, for whenever they come up. Maybe they don't ever come up. That's, right. that's a risk you got to take with those. For sure. A big one for Peldon was kind of that moment of acceptance with her parents. Yeah. She's never, she has not that she's never had that. She grew up in a very loving home, but she hasn't had that for a long time because they've been at odds about the whole situation on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, she was right. <laughs> that big moment. That was pretty important to her. And I think for her parents as well. So there's there's definitely going to be some interesting moments. I'm still very curious to see what the full story is with Rin's dad, because mm -hmm. uh, I mean he's got some ideas and he didn't respond to that notice. Mm -hmm. That thing that happened. That thing that happened. So um, there's some un untapped emotions there that might come yep soon who knows 
Who knows? You know. Actually, it's That's at this point, to a degree, it's a little bit up to the dice. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Whether it's soon or hundreds of years from now. <laughs> yeah. mm, did you uh, try and make up a model of that uh, time causality? Haven't had time to yet. Thing that I was talking about. Yeah, I mean it's not too big of a deal. Obviously. For me, the hard thing to fit for me to figure out is like, okay, without rolling, without knowing in advance what's going to happen, how do I determine whether or not, you know, Arbiter Larissa can talk to you guys or what that looks oh, like? Yeah, that's an important thing that I probably should have talked about. You actually, um, so you you already know roughly the BBEG's timeline, right? Yeah. There's there's room for reactions, right? Uh, obviously, but uh, so. Uh, the thing I, I probably didn't mention, which is actually an important part of getting this thing set up in the first place, is uh, during the playthrough, you are actively creating the first wheel. Gotcha. Um, so you have three zones on that first wheel. Right. Right. And then uh, you're, you are creating the player zone. You're what? putting it together as you go. Yeah. So what they're doing is getting getting written on, and you might have 20 tallies in that rotation, or you might have 100, right? Sure. Uh, depending on exactly the scope of the, of the thing. But, um, yeah, the idea is that the first time you're going through it in time, you will be writing the events on it. Okay. And then you translate those events onto the other wheels if you have them set up for different um, for different uh, binary factors. But don't you still need to know which section of time? I I, I feel like there's something I'm still not totally grokking about it. Um. Uh, well. Roberto says, we finished She-Ra together at Jungle House, and that part with Bo's parents was like, oh, yeah, that was pretty intense. Have you watched the new She-Ra? I have not. It's pretty good. Definitely worth a watch. But, because that's the thing is like, okay, so, so you know, somebody in the group has sending. Mm -hmm. So they message Larissa. What's going on with Larissa? And, you, you, like... I have to I have to have made the role already, I guess, is what I feel like, to determine whether you guys are back in time, forward in time, like what's going on in time. And I don't want to do that until you go back. And that's what I'm trying yeah. to figure out, you know. So there's a couple different wheels that will be tracking different uh, pivotal um, aspects of right. the story. So you'll be writing the player stuff on one side of the dial. Uh -huh. uh, the other two sides should essentially be filled in, but you always have the uh, you always have the ability to rewrite any of those things given whatever the players do. So uh, if if in in what you're saying, so you you're saying the players contacted um, you're, the players contacted uh, Larissa. Yeah. And that was uh, that was day ten, we'll say. Okay. So then they contact them tomorrow, and because of the time flux in the Feywild, they actually reached her yesterday. But I'm trying to. What I'm trying to determine is how do you use this if you don't want to roll the time flux until you guys go back. That that to me is the key that everything hinges around. I want. I don't want to know the time dilation effect until you guys go back. Oh. I don't want that to affect my decisions or your decisions. Okay. Or I, I want the unknown of it to affect your decisions. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So uh, so to, to tackle that a little bit, um, you can do... Um, you can continually rewrite things. So w let's say in the, in the event of using the sending spell. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interacting with the other timeline. Mm -hmm. So you can make the roll there to see where it ends up on the timeline. Because that should be on another section of dial or another dial all its own. Okay. And so if they end up at a spot that's before some of the other things, well, it may or may not erase all of the things past that. Huh. Uh, that's more of a reactionary thing for you. The idea okay. is that there's like each section of these wheels has, you know, 20, 30 spots. And you have two or three sides filled in. You're filling the third side in as you play the game. 
that changes what the other two sides do, and you can constantly update the tallies. Interesting. Okay. And then that tracks a continuous storyline based on where the players are. And uh, if they're interacting with, with moments in the past on that storyline, you can look at previous tally marks and just go back there and start rewriting the progress. Okay. Does that make sense? It's more of a way of tracking where you are in a, in a separate timeline. Okay. And, and making sure that the, the changes the players made affect mm -hmm. from that point on. Okay. I think I, I get that. I think for me... I think for me, it relies on me uh, having a determination of where the other timeline is. Yeah. And if that's what I want to avoid, then it seems like probably not the right thing for me. Um, you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I, as the Dungeon Master, don't want to know what the other timeline's doing, mm -hmm. then, then why use the system? If I don't yeah, want if, to know. If you don't want to know, then right. there's no reason. So you know? the, the, the way I, I built it is that like each pivotal moment has a success and a failure. Right. And the two separate, the two, uh, the two non-static uh, sides, not the non-player sides, are six, uh, the situation if it's a yes or a, fa a success and the situation if it's a failure on the other side. Right. So yeah, if you don't want to know the outcomes of the opposite scenario, then yeah, that's not really going to work for you. Yeah. Okay. So. I think that's I think that's where my mind has kept breaking down on it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's that... really cool though for tracking when a bunch of different things are going on or like multiple plot lines are going on or even just for keeping track of like what is my bad guy up to? He's not sitting there waiting for the players to show up. Yeah, you just turn the dial. Players are here. What is he doing? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I, I uh originally came up with the idea of that dial system mm -hmm. back in I don't know 2006 oh wow or something <laughs> when I was playing first edition and my buddies all had to play and, uh, and I wanted to play a, a time based game mm -hmm. that um, that I I couldn't find any systems that really tackled it the way I wanted to right so um, yeah, it, it, it allowed me to easily say, well, if they're doing this, then this other stuff is in the works, and 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 they and, and the players fucked up, so that means that they get to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so there's it's that stuff. Yeah, totally. Well, that's cool. Um, we never finished that campaign. Unfortunately, that was kind of the way it went. Uh, I, I lived That's the way with, it goes a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I lived with some friends at the time. Oh, uh, no! I, I, uh oh. Oh, he broke! Uh oh. <laughs> what? Why did he break? What the hell? Anyway, sorry, carry on. I, I moved away from my folks' house and, mm -hmm. uh, and just moved in with uh, a friend of mine and, and, his, and his family. Um, and uh, uh, a couple friends of mine, a couple brothers. And. Both the same age, same class in high school, so we just came home from school and you know, what are we doing today? Uh, I can't think of anything, so I guess it's just D and D. Right. So yeah, tons and tons of like uh, made up adventures just after school. You know, yeah. Almost every day after school. So when I say hundreds or thousands of games, I'm not. I'm not lying. I'm right, not, right. I'm not uh, trying to. Uh, falsely pad your gamer stats yeah no I, I, we've, I've literally played a thousand characters right <laughs> between first edition and probably Pathfinder would be the next most um, prolific game for oh us. so you were mostly first edition mostly first edition oh boy that's exciting yeah holy cow uh, well we didn't have any money and the only books we had were our folks books from the garage yeah so. that's crazy Nightshade on this spell effect. That is an impressive sounding uh, paint. Yeah. Well, Citadel doesn't disappoint that way. No. I do a lot with the names. 
Now I believe when I had originally cast this Sacred Flame, uh, it was green. Kind of a sickly green with a white crackling effect. Mm -hmm. But up until or recently, as some changes have been happening with this character, sure. his spell effects have changed color. A touch, and I believe where we ended last time was his was kind of a blue. Okay. So we're making this purple-ish. Now, answer me this: mm -hmm. Has Hey You multiclassed? He has. What is he multiclassed into? Do you have a guess? Um, I only just barely noticed that he multiclassed, so I feel like I don't know at all. What is he multiclassed into? Uh, he is a sorcerer. Really? Interesting. But he's a type of sorcerer that heals. Yeah. And I don't know what that is. Um, it is a divine soul sorcerer. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that before. It's in uh, Xanathar's? Xanathar's? Yeah. Seems, seems like the right place to find it. That's cool. Oh my god, you know what? In all of my uh, crafter noons and discussions of my characters, I've completely forgotten about a, a character that I really liked that I had to bail on the campaign because it was in Portland. Uh -huh. And for several weeks, I kept it up and I just went every week and it was just, it ended up being too much. Go, yeah. Going up there every week just for uh, a game. And um, his name was Kenrix. Hmm. And he was a... Um, Celestial Warlock. And so he was a warlock with like some pretty uh, pretty cool offensive capabilities, but uh, with, you know, the, that, that healing pool that probably works very similar to uh, Divine Soul uh, Sorcerer. And I have a feeling very similar to Penny's Druid Circle as well. Actually, no. It's nothing like that. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does it work? Divine Soul, when they choose to take a new sorcerer spell, they may choose to take any spell from the cleric spell list. What? <laughs> they can just take a cleric spell instead. Yeah. As much as they want? Mm -hmm. They could all they could be all cleric all of spells. All your sorcerer spells could be cleric spells. Then why are you a sorcerer? Because I'm definitely not a cleric. That's true. That's true. Can't argue with that. <laughs> um, uh, because the way somebody becomes a divine soul. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the So I don't know if you recall our interaction with a deva. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I had a private conversation with a deva. Okay. Can you recall that? I vaguely do. So there's it can no happen at the table, but secretly, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. There's no real confirmation about it, but mm, what what happened to him in terms of multiclassing may have something to do with that. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so he's... he's kind maybe, of a, maybe he's alive and we will see him through his eyes. It's an interesting right thing. Now. Uh, Divine Soul's got some other cool features, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I was like, wait, uh, so I can do charisma casting on with all your fucking increase to DC. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So, yeah, we got we to gotta tell the viewers here that... Uh, uh, so, Jesse gave us not one, but two items that increase spell save DC... Uh, and spell attack, I think. Yeah. Uh, they do both of those things. I think both of them, both of them in, increase DC, but only one of them increases attack. Yeah. Or is it both? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay. And uh, and so, there at the time, nobody could really use it right. except for me. Yeah. Because Tempest, our only other caster, had recently died. Right. Like two or three sessions prior. Right. And so I ended up with both of these really strong caster items for spell save DC and spell attack. And yeah, pretty much nothing saves yeah. on my stuff. It's like, oh, it's what's, what's rather the DC? ridiculous. 
I think I think my DC is 19 yeah. or something at level six. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's a little absurd. I think Jesse probably has some reservations about those two items being on the same character. But I don't know anything about accidentally giving a shit ton of magical items to your characters and regretting <laughs> it strongly. Oh my god, still so upset with myself. I gave you guys so much good shit, and it was not like the worst part about it. And it's all my own fault. It's not on you guys. But the worst part about it is that I forgot for them to use the magical items. They didn't use it in the fight. Yeah. They could have just not had it. And then I forgot to use it. And then you were like, okay, we loot the bodies. And I just pick up their equipment list. And I'm like, here's what you find. And then I was like, wait! Do Shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, anyway. My fault. It was about that time I realized. I fucked up. I fucked up bad. Okay. So we got a little highlight on there now. I'm gonna hit it again with the shade because I think after the highlight, that's gonna be a little better. What time do we usually usually close the show out here? Anywhere between nine and ten that we feel like we're at a good stopping point. I am not going to get as far on all these creatures as I wanted to, but they're all in a really good spot um, where they have like a strong base color and, you know, the majority of them is done because they are majority one color. And for most of them, it's their skin. So just like a lot of details to fill in. Trolls are coming out nice this year. Mm-hmm. Looking like a good harvest. I can't believe Yeah. All right. So I ended up... That purple didn't really do what I wanted it to do on the clear resin. Mm-hmm. So I did a more traditional dry brush kind of approach, but it still looks okay. Oh, I think that looks awesome. Hell yeah. And he's about done. Yeah? Hell yeah. He's even based, too. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. Is that crimson still in there? Do a little bit of this crimson. You know what keeps happening in, with Hillary that cracks me up? What's that? People keep like sliding into her accent. Oh. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but when you're talking to somebody with a really powerful accent, you can accidentally start aping it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's happened with Alex the most because he's got he's already got he's like pretty close. You know, like a bit of a twang, but he keeps like sliding all gravelly, and then I see him like physically pull himself back and be like, nope. <laughs> Jarvis is just, you know. He's uh, just up here. Yep, he's up here. He's got a little gruffness to him, but it's a totally different flavor. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's... I noticed you uh, you you cl uh, clocked Jesse a couple of times. Clocked? Uh, like you know, you kind of got him into your voice space. Oh yeah. You yeah. were talking to a character who was not at all supposed to have that accent, and then they did for a second until he was like, about. <laughs> I mean. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's a tough one with like an Australian accent. Yeah. Uh, so Bridget and I actually intentionally worked together a little bit on our accents because we knew that we would have trouble at the table <laughs> talking to each other. Right. If we didn't practice. Right. <laughs> kind of a West Virginia um, Appalachian twang mm -hmm. and a, and an Australian or oceanic yeah. twang. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. <laughs> my, it, uh, you know, I do my I do my own audiobooks, and um, my main character in, in my big series, the Nightblade Epic, um, she is a, a very close, very very close to uh, Penny's accent. Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to figure out for a while like what she wanted to do with accents. She was thinking the Southern thing, and I was like, well. Maybe a light southern would be good. Mm -hmm. I recommended the West Virginia kind of uh, flavor. And uh, yeah, it, it stuck. I think it's great. Uh, it's a good choice for her. Yeah. And it's funny when she, like, she 
it, it makes her come off as initially very disarming and very just like, oh, you know, cute. Yeah. Um, and then when we had our role play talk and she was like, you've spent a week with Penny. Here's what you've seen. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, there is some hard bitten elements to this girl. Yeah, cool. She's... Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I think Bridget's come a, lot of, a long way in her, uh, in her character design in general. Yeah. Because um, uh, she didn't play with us as much back then. Uh, right. She did play a few games, but she definitely definitely didn't get nearly the same number of hours that the rest of us got, for sure. So, right. Uh, but, yeah, this was the first game that she'd been in since then pretty much right iron uh, belly was yeah iron belly was and uh, it's not entirely true we'd done a few one-offs here and there but uh in a, in a pathfinder campaign it was uh, almost a success um, actually that's a that's an interesting story that i wish i stuck to uh i i wish that uh, that i did stick to that campaign more because uh -huh. it might have actually been a huge hit. It was it was before Critical Role um, broadcasted a more narrative focused game. Right. And a lot of the people I'd encounter who had played D and D and just never played a narrative driven yeah game. A lot of people didn't. Yeah. It was new to me. And uh, and so when when I, I I had a campaign in Pathfinder that I tried to make more narrative right. based kind of a Critical Role or or our Nat Twenty proof style. Uh, uh, you know, a little more that way, and um, I liked where it was going to go, but uh, I think it was a little hard for some of the players at the time. Yeah, it can be it can be difficult if you're not used to it. Yeah, and it can be difficult to transition to if your type of D and D that got you into the game that you like a lot is I dungeon crawl. That's that's what this game is. I show up, the DM gives me the dungeon. I you know I disarm the traps, I kill the monsters. And then I go, and then I get the treasure. Yeah. Um, and switching from that into like, oh, I'm a person. I have to. T well, I have to talk to other people. <laughs> what is this? What did I do to get myself here? <laughs> I want out. I want out of this crazy world. Oh, that is no. That's my brush. That's your brush. You have much left to do on him, or is he done? I think he's pretty much done. Okay. Maybe we just call it there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at a good level of... Uh, I've finished the main colors on all of the uh, all of the minis so far. By the way, um, I didn't even bring this up, but the uh, the giant... This giant had his uh, backpack and, and uh, uh, pants already painted um, by a friend of mine before I started tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repaint those, but that's not... Yeah, that's not... That wasn't painted by me, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna kind of review that. But his skin is done. He obviously needs details on like the the nails, eyes, and uh, hair, um, and that's the case for uh, both of them. And I really like how it came out. It is a little bit more high contrasty than I would want on a player character, but it's good for a mini like this that you know sort of dominates the battlefield and is mostly going to be seen from afar. Um, Pretty similar results on the ogres, which is appropriate. They are another, you know, giant type of creature, um, and I like uh, I like them to look uh, vaguely similar. And then finally, the ah uh, the trolls. That one that broke really threw me for a loop. Um, but you know, uh, most of that's done. I might even go for a lighter layer of dry brush because they're pretty dark when they're on a table. Like if you're looking at a ta down at a table like this, that's pretty. That's pretty dark, but uh, so I might take them up a little bit higher, but I'll do that later. Um, but now, what we all really care about? Let's see the boy. Yeah. Oh, right as like right as you reach for the paintbrush. I have one. It's like asking someone a question thing. when they put a. Right there. There we go. That's good. Nice. There we go. There's there's a couple other spots that I need to. Uh, get in there with a brush because there's a couple dots of white poking through yeah but uh overall i actually like how he turned out because i he was looking like garbage in my opinion at first and now he actually has some detail that's discernible he's awesome i like him a lot the hat does so much for him <laughs> it's crazy yeah 
It's crazy. He's great. Ah, oh, the boy. You really uh, try to um, bring him on uh, Sunday because I know the group's going to want to see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking maybe I'll do a couple dots on his eyes here, but yeah. That should do, though. Yeah, I do. But that's another time. Okay, well then we will wrap up. Uh, hey, dude, thanks for uh, thanks for coming and painting with me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a blast. He's great. Um, yeah, I guess next week I will continue on the Giants and whatnot. We don't know who's going to be in next week. Do you know if Bridget's available? Um, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Off, uh, figure that out off stream. I can certainly ask her. Yeah. Last thing I would want is for you to be like she should be, and then her not to be at all. I mean, she's she's here, so we can ask her. I know. We will probably ask her right off uh, right after stream ends. That's right. But uh, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for everybody who came and uh, hung out in chat. Uh, we will uh, be back as per usual next Tuesday, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time or thereabouts uh, with next week's That One's Yours. Um, that one's, uh, what's his face, Angus's. I think that's the only one I got from you. Um, and of course, we will be live on Sunday at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time uh, with Honor Game 2. Can't wait! I can't wait. What's what's on the docket? So we got back from the thing. No, we're still on the boat. No, no, yeah, we're on the boat, but mm -hmm. we're back at the um, the ship. So wait, did the boat leave, or did it like? I think it was all an illusion. Okay. While not quite being an illusion, you know, it was like time travel. Right. So yeah, so what I'm saying is we're back into our own environment. Our plane. Yeah. Or whatever. However yeah. that works. You know what would be really interesting? I like like it doesn't matter because I'm sure we would have been finangled into it anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure the key of how we were sent there was the bracelets. Like you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And that's I'm... kind of a dick move. Yeah, okay, so, so we were talking we were talking about how this guy does have some villain vibes. Uh-huh. I am totally on edge about the bracelets. I have not put mine on. Mm. And I'm I'm very curious about those. Hellery is pretty pretty con not like I don't want to say that she's over arrogant, but she's pretty confident she's protected. Yeah. So she's got the bracelet on for sure. Mm. He's like, okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, as she gets a little bit more advanced and can directly talk to her god, she is going to start asking a lot of questions. A lot, a lot, a lot of questions. Yeah. So, anyway. All right, everybody. Peace out. Thank you again for watching, and we will catch you next time. Bye. See ya.